that back in the day they had an event Foxtrot where it was like an actual like land qualifier for like a CPL or something. But it was at one of those trade shows. And as Maggie Capra, the best UK player, was playing an actual qualifier match, he was like, you know, like fucking aimed on the corner or something. Someone like tapped him on his shoulder like that, like some random person from the crowd. <laughs> then when he turned around, he was like, yeah, what? He goes, like, yeah, what? The guy goes, can I have a go? Because <laughs> this guy didn't even understand it was a tournament. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Side Select. We've got some cool stuff to natter on about today. Obviously, some beautiful esports things happening in the beautiful esports world, including the first instance of a, a Hall of Hall of Fame type thing uh, that we get to discuss a little bit here, which is quite exciting for me. Before we get into that all nasty, horrible gaming stuff, I have an interesting question to ask you two lovely gentlemen, obviously, Dorian and Rich here. I... I want to know how well not only do you know your surprise, surprise food, but more so, how well do you know each other? So I believe I've asked you the question before here. I mean, some would say I live in, is it rent free? And when we do these, I get every single <laughs> one done, huh? Pretty good, you This is true. This is true. I want to, yeah. Didn't I win last this... time or am I making that up? When did he win the last one? I, when we no, did this did Okay, whatever. Maybe. No, you didn't. Well, I don't think you've ever won, to be fair, but... No. <laughs> you, you I think that was just a, a dream <laughs> I had last yeah, night. Yeah, apparently it was, yeah. Uh, apparently. Yeah, yeah. I, if I, I, think, I think... No, the, the last, last one was the one with the takeaway, right? And the yeah, thing was, right. his, the joke on it was, Rich, I was bad, but you were just worse than me, <laughs> yeah, so no, I won. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, that's true. like, I wasn't even actually that close myself, but you know... <laughs> yeah, you were both out of touch, but Rich was... <laughs> it was great. It was fantastic. Certainly, yeah, they had that moment where I got to look like the old boomer who's like, "What? That should only cost one pound to go to the cinema." Because all the like the whatever it was, the fish and chips one or something. It's all like the kids think I'm out of touch now or something. I still think that price is mental, though. I mean, it is absolutely egregious. It is it is horrible. But um, yes, we're not doing that today. We're, on, not, we're not going through any prices. Um, I think I've asked you before on this on this wonderful show what your last meal would be on death row. Yeah. Um. But I, I want to hear from you both because I don't imagine you probably remember much about that. What you think the other person's meal would be on death row? Okay. What so rich? What do you think Thorin's meal would be, or what type of meal? And, and Thorin, what meal do you think Rich would choose for death row? So the last meal you're ever gonna have in your life, what are you choosing for death row? More specifically, I guess, what are the what is the other person choosing? I want to say I'm trying to remember what Thorin put at the top of his tier list when he did that, like, uh, American uh, fast oh, right, food the one thing. Oh, right, or whatever, yeah. Yeah, and I felt like there was a sufficient amount of enthusiasm about what was over the top of that list that that could be right up there. But I can't, I'm trying to, like, was that in and out I don't know, I think that was in the overrated category. Was it Chick-fil-A? <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't remember. So rather than shooting in the dark there, I'm just going to go out on a, a women's to say that, Dorian in his final moments or want like, I don't know, a taste of home or something, you know, to sort of re recenter okay. him as he goes into the soil from which he came. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say a really good roast dinner with like, you know, thrice fried potato roast potatoes, like absolutely top quality, uh chicken and or beef maybe both you know you know yorkshire puddings the whole bell all the bells and whistles everything you know like an s plus tier uh roast meal i'm gonna say okay so i just got a good poker face on for this one before you reveal what your last meal would be what do you think then Don? What, what would rich's last meal be I think it's actually a really hard one because to me, I've always thought this topic, usually most people just sort of mean what's your favorite food or something. And it's like the equivalent of like the framing techniques, like gun to your head is the, it's the same scenario. Right. But I actually feel like if people are doing it for real, they probably wouldn't pick their favorite thing. They'd pick something based on what the circumstances. So I think for me, the obvious one to go for is just something simple, like a nice steak. I feel like you'd have like a, I don't know, like a ribeye steak or something with vegetables, mm. something like that. Something quite, quite, fill in because here's the thing to me you can't really go wrong with a steak right as long as you do it properly it's pretty much I, always the same i do seem to remember rich talking about steaks having good quality steak being on his on his family holidays and that being a a thing i could be making that up of course but um yes this is great we, we're powering through this this is a very efficient section sometimes i'll watch the vods back and we're like 30 minutes into the thing and we're still talking about takeaway um but these are our answers we're locked it in 
Well, the only problem I have with the premise is this. I'll give you a little bit of flavor. The only thing I do Uh think about the premise that doesn't make sense to me is this. It's like I say, because everyone asking and answering this question never has or will be on death row, (laughs) right? We're all just sort of assuming that it's like, the last day of school or something. It's like, what meal do you want in there? Like, because I, I will just put this out there. Am I the only one who thinks that, even though this is a cheat answer, so I wouldn't give his my answer. Like, the first thing I think when someone says, what would your meal be when you're about to, like, be killed right afterwards? is like, maybe I just wouldn't feel that hungry in that moment. You know what I mean? Maybe, you know what? I don't know about you guys, but there's times in life where stress gets to me, it goes to my stomach. Like, sometimes you don't feel like eating in that moment, right? When, in fact, wouldn't part of you just think, what's the point? And just go out and die, potentially. I know the idea is brilliant of sort of, you know, get to save a one last thing or something like that but i feel like in that moment genuinely you might be a little bit preoccupied with what's about to happen right then again as i suggested i can't really put my mind in the frame of someone on death row and not least because by the way death was always such an american thing too isn't it like yeah. it's so, such a ridiculous like hackneyed concept from america we don't even have it in the uk do we in the uk we don't even have the death penalty you just go to prison forever don't you so i don't know whatever so, I yeah. do seem to remember when we were first sort of asked this question different way around, different way around. I said something stupid like I would just eat to mass excess, so I feel like dying anyway. I'm pretty sure that <laughs> I was pretty sure that was my answer. Okay. So, I don't and think I was. Eating, but I made it more execute you because you're never done. Yeah, but I've made it more yeah. difficult for Thorin in theory and easier for me because I went very non-specific. You know, I was just gorging on food, whereas Thorin probably did actually give an answer, and I just can't remember what it was. So yeah, there you go. I don't. Remember or can I? It's worse. By your logic. Logic, all you can eat buffet is what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. Your death yeah. meal, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> really, yeah. really push that premise and see, you know, who wins first, the buffet table or the injection. Who knows? Since since we've we've powered through this, we'll, we'll have a bonus question then. What do you guys think my last meal would be? Ooh. Ooh. The man of mystery. You guys the man of mystery. I am you know what the saddest thing is? This is going to reveal again, in the same way as we make fun of Rich and implies some sort of like fucking wannabe striver to be upper class or something. I also feel like I'm now going to do the opposite to Fox Rock Lord Diminish him, Rich. So if I have to <laughs> genuinely guess, I'm actually just going to guess some bit shit. Like he just wants like roast chicken and chips or something, you know, again, just sort of like home, home meal in it. Like, you know, this kind of like hearty shit that he's probably used to. I feel like, I don't know if I'm dissing you too much by that, but I feel that's like a reasonable guess. What I'm going to go for? for an even lazier option Come on. and be like, because I, I, I just have this like uh, visceral memory of like gross gore always getting doxxed with those uh, takeaway Chineses that always got sent to his house, but he'd always eat at least one of them and then complain that he had <laughs> oh, that's one. So okay. I'm going to say Chinese. Okay. I'm going to say Fox was a takeaway Chinese as his but last meal. By the way, low key, the best part about that isn't any of this. I, I don't approve of doxxing anyway, even if he's it, slightly funny. It's just the idea that he still eats part of it. Yeah, no, exactly. I, like. I actually Brilliant. sort of low key appreciate that though. Uh, We're not what not. Well, there's all the chips or something. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's always All the right. same. He gets the first one, and then he's like, "Oh, this is brilliant!" And then like fifty more come. He's like, "Oh, come on, guys, this is outrageous behavior." Oh, that is ridiculous, though, isn't yeah. it? Come on. Yeah. yeah. So, let's get your answers for each of you then. So, Rich, what would you think your last meal would be? Thorin, Thorin went with a, a hearty steak and 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 some vegetables, that kind of thing. No, I mean, I the thing that for whatever reason was coming into my head was Indian food. I don't know why. I have no idea why. I, I could, maybe <laughs> it's because you could just go like as spicy as you want and you won't have to live with the consequences. That's <laughs> thing. That's it. As a joke, that sounds like it makes sense. That's even worse. You're going to be sat there about to be electrocuted with like, fuck it, oh, I don't got any milk. Fucking hell, it's too hot. It's Vindaloo, it's too hot. By the way, that uh, of all the, even though it's a good comedic answer, Fox Shop, I refuse to accept that he's having like a Vindaloo before the exit. There's, there's no way that, I could believe curry, but there's no way you're having something super spicy. Come on. Uh, you no know, way. again, maybe the pain distraction keeps you from it. Who knows? You know, maybe you'll be praying for the end if you have like, yeah, naga chili curry That's or something. Who, who knows? So, yeah. That's true. What would you take then for your last meal, Thorin? The funny thing is, I have to say, like, I wouldn't actually have picked what he picked, but I would say if I did like a top three, probably, yeah, roast dinner would be up there. I do think it's one of the, like, the best meals you can have, but you can't go wrong with it. But actually, mine, to be boring, would be I would have just picked Korean barbecue because the reason why for that one I pick it is that's just one of the few foods that personally I can eat almost any time, almost any day. It's like one of the few that I don't, I don't, like, my palate doesn't really get bored of it somehow. Like, I, and ironically, when I was in Korea, I would absolutely eat it every single day. Obviously, I'd vary what type, etc. but I actually, I found it was very easy to eat every day. So, again, the reason I'd pick that is I just feel I can't go wrong with that. I would pick that in most settings. Yeah. But it's not a bad guess. It'd be top three years, guess. Yeah, top three is not bad. Uh, obviously, when we answer these questions, I always put in stupid caveats like a really good version of X. But realistically, if you like ask for a steak or something from the prison, that's 
probably yeah. going to be from Iceland. So sure, yeah. sure. So yeah. <laughs> It's going to be one of those ones that frozen. You mean like the yeah, the state cachet state or shit. something from go. the freezer section? Like the shit you get at school. Yeah. yeah, yeah, fair enough. So it seems as though, unfortunately, you guys don't really know each other too well. But hopefully, neither of you end up. Talk to each other in the sense of what the other person would have a <laughs> death row. Yes. Yeah, you're, you're right on that fuck shot. Yeah, you got yeah. that one. I Which don't really is... feel like ashamed at not knowing that book. <laughs> you in fact, should do. If you did <laughs> know <laughs> that, uh, yeah, it's a bit weird, it? isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That is true, actually. I guess maybe this is the, the perfect thing. I would say, as well, to round this off then, my, my death row meal. What do you say? You said roast chicken and chips? Yeah, I just want some Chinese. 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 I don't Chinese. like Chinese, for starters. You don't I, like Chinese? I don't really Chinese. No, I Ooh, don't. Ooh, how is that possible? Honestly, yeah. I, I, it just makes me feel like shit. Honestly, Look, I won't lie, really? it can obviously be mega greasy and all that, but it's I mean, the just... reason I'm shocked is just because it's one of those ones where, like, to me, Chinese has such an insane, like, spectrum of types mm -hmm. of food, though. Like, surely there's something in there you like. Yeah, I mean, I can have bits, you know, like chicken salad is quite nice, sweet and sour things, but it's just always okay. like, I feel, yeah, I don't know. I just don't vibe it very well. And I, always, I always feel like, I always feel super rough after having a Chinese takeaway, no matter where it's from. So I wouldn't go for that. Although, from your logic, Rich, I could have it and not worry about it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. So there's that. Uh, and yeah, chicken and chips. Nah, don't really like I don't know, nah, not really to be. I feel like he's like, going for the Indian now. Are you going for the Indian now, Fox Shop? Is that what you're I'm going not going for? for Indian. I would choose a fry up. Right. Fucking hell. Not yeah, only is the mental one, the idea that'd be a last meal, but then two, you're gonna literally be fried one minute afterwards. It just seems like, it almost <laughs> seems like two on the nose, doesn't it? I know, like <laughs> come on. I feel You'll like I feel I like do. it should probably be illegal to pick breakfast as your final that is meal. Mental, I mean, that's mental, I know. That is bad. Like, or you can have a Quality fucking. Fry it's like, like full English as well. You get like all the yeah, fucking. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. You fair enough. Get okay. the beans, the fried well, eggs. I guess it's a patriotic way to go out. Fair play. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Honestly, it's a great treat. It's a great treat. I think if it weren't that, I would maybe go for like a uh, like a roast. Like a proper good roast, though. I don't know. I think that would be my choice. But I love, I love a fry up. It's a, it's a proper quality treat. So, that's how I treat myself: a fry up before the frying. Right. Let's talk about some gaming, shall we? Electronic gaming. Uh, we're starting with League of Legends. The news that Faker has been inducted to the, uh, the Hall of Legends, continuing Riot's tradition of just branding everything that they they get their hands on with it with their own brand uh, it's basically the hall of fame so fakers being is the first player that's that's getting inducted into league of legends is hall of fame uh the the criteria for getting into it and a quote from right games uh they induct a pro player into the hall of legends to honor their achievements within the sport and game players are chosen by an independent voting panel of esports industry veterans and experts from every region who select players based on criteria, including international births, international and regional titles, role-specific stats, and overall contributions to the sport. Uh, so Faker has been is the first player to to get into the Hall of Legends. What do we think about this? Um, you know, obviously, Faker is is the goat. There's really no question about that. Uh, do you think he should have been the first one inducted? Do you think there should have been other inductees? How do you think uh, Riot's way of doing it, for example? I'll just, just off the top of my head, the fact that he's still an active player for me seems a bit strange to induct someone into like a Hall of Fame when they're still going about their thing. But um, yes, give me your thoughts. Fakers in the Hall of Legends, Rich, hit me. Yeah, I mean, I think that is the first thing where it's like, what it, when you're introducing a hall especially when you're introducing actually like a hall of fame thing like part way through something's life cycle i think it's so much more logical even without the sort of other context of how traditional sports and stuff do it to start at the beginning like you want to play catch up if anything you know it's so messy to like be jumping around especially with a player who hasn't even finished playing like to me that's crazy and i think the only reason they did that is for sort of the immediate community feedback and like gravitas of oh because it's faker and he is the most iconic player and blah 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 it gives it like more of a punch when you launch it right so i kind of get that but yeah i think that it should be a requirement basically that you're retired before you get inducted um i mean i'm not saying he'd end up doing like a o oj simpson or something and you know get himself uh but i just i, I do think that is a bit weird um 
and also because they released they really cynically like obviously re like, did the trailer for like his Ari skin and stuff around it it's kind of just like a massive mark it feels like a ma massive marketing gimmick for anyone who even has a sort of you know shred of cynicism in their uh, veins which i have bucket loads of so yeah that like simultaneously announcing he's gonna be the first person to be inducted and then like by the way by our skin it's like mm. come on guys like what the fuck um the thing i actually have like the biggest problem with um i think this is something thorin will probably share to a certain extent is i don't like how in the criteria they like specifically mention like international and domestic titles like i think that's something that we do all sort of take into account to a certain extent. Like, obviously, you tell the story of the game through who won and all, all the rest of it or whatever. But you also immediately open yourself up to issues. And sometimes these things, I think, not necessarily that they should be unspecified, but I think they may have dug themselves a little hole here. Like, oh, for example, are we going to put Bengi in the Hall of Legends? Like, how high or low is the bar going to be? Because if it's just about accumulating titles this is going to turn into like the NBA hall of fame where fucking everybody gets in. Like, I don't like that as a premise at all. I also think they may have done that to kind of further justify Faker being the first, like, Oh, he's got 10 domestic uh, titles. He's got this amount of worlds, blah, blah, blah. So if you look at the criteria, he has to be the first name in, but I think when you go back and look at some of the other people that we'll probably talk about who should have gone in first, they obviously haven't accumulated that um, those amount of titles i didn't play it long enough but so yeah that's my main issue that i think it should go chronologically it's going to be really confusing and messy process now that they've done it like this and for example if they were borrowing i mean the so the premier league is another example of obviously the meme is like football started before 1992 so it's kind of stupid to call like alan shearer the greatest ever goal scorer or whatever but the premier league did stamp like the start of like the modern era or whatever and then when they did it their first inductees were Alan Shearer, who was did score the most goals in that era. And then like the consensus best player of all time in the Premier League, which is Thierry Henry, who is also retired, but they're both retired. So you can do it like that. You don't have to start with, you know, the guys that played in 92-3, whatever. But there was method to that madness. I don't think there is any method to this madness outside of marketing, basically, and trying to make as big an immediate splash as possible that's now going to feel diminished each time you... In induct a new person whereas you could have done a really cool thing as well where if you wanted to like build towards you know faker or the modern stars as they retire so yeah i don't i don't really like that um i do think the title thing is very problematic i'm already thinking of like people off the top of my head who by their own criteria should probably get in just on that basis which i don't like so yeah i i think this is a a strange look and i'm sure we'll talk about like other people we'd have started with before but those are kind of like my overarching thoughts do we have any information on the esports like panel, the committee that is inducting no, people? No, just, yeah, right. any... just just written there that it's decided by humans basically, but they don't really right. give any details. So that would also, by the way, be very nice to know, given the allow the amount of people they allow to vote for their fucking all pro stuff, which is mm. you know whenever you've clicked on the ballot and seen some of those names, it's pretty suspect. I would actually be very interested to see who does have votes because it's also just going to be very weird because riot is such this like strange like control freaky company that tries to you know, i i'm curious as to to what extent they've gone with third parties to be part of this voting panel and so far as they have who they've like selected because it's a very incestuous company and they are obsessed with being in full control of everything that happens so yeah i think they should probably in this initial um announcement also have announced who's voting because yeah to me that is problematic as well fair play what are your thoughts on it then Thorne? i mean actually on the point you make there that's another reason why i'm actually in general against this whole uh, affair is because like first things first if you say i'm making a hall of fame or hall of legends as they've cynically called it here well then the first question is you do have the right panel of people, so it's like the right people getting in. So if I don't even know who they are already, why should I give a fuck about this Hall of Fame? Like, yep. it's, it's not like if you don't know, you might not like who they put in, but if you ever see real sports Hall of Fame, they're fucking amazing, the panels. In fact, often it's actually people who are in the Hall of Fame themselves.
stuff. I think that's how the NFL one works, as far as I know. And by the way, I actually think if you want to contrast sports, the NFL one is the best Hall of Fame. Yeah. And here's why. Because they made it the most exclusive, Rich. You know this. Like You're right. The NBA one, if you're one of like the top three or four players on a team that won multiple championships, you're almost certainly going to get in. Like You just are at that point. Whereas the NFL one, they almost went the other route. It's why I love it. Because there's like a great saying where, I think it was Deion Sanders said this, where he said, like, it's the Hall of Fame, not the Hall of Really Good. Like, yeah. The whole point yeah. is it, it's not, like, obviously every person even being considered was a very good player and a great player and maybe even a champion, right? But the point is you want the Hall of Fame to be so exclusive that even though it means you're going to admit some people were on that borderline, it'll mean it'll say super elite though. Because I agree with Rich, the obvious point here is if you start including championships, then you have to have those hard questions of like, on the one hand, if you're going to tell me, guys, I agree with this, that Faker was the GOAT because I think he did most of the heavy lifting in his teams. Well, then simultaneously, how can all his teammates get in? If like, Which yeah. is it? Did he do the heavy lifting or did they do it as a team? So already that's a concern right there because it makes me think they're not going to put the right people in. Like, luckily within Riot or Riot Sphere, there are people like Emily Rand, Jat, who I would trust to get it generally right. Like in case of Emily, you'll probably should do a better job than most of us. But my immediate concern is, unironically, if I was maybe making an act like I'm not talking about even for my own self-aggrandizement. If I just wanted to make like, the best panel possible, well, the joke is, like, I'd be on there immediately. Monte Cristo, you know what I mean? Like, Papa Smithy, like, I'd have, I'd have a load of people on there who are obvious people, because I actually think, by the way, this game has been out a long time relative to esports, but not, like, sports. And so it's actually one area, by the way, where we could have the best panel ever to decide yeah, this, true. because the problem with real sports is there almost is no one who watched the NFL in the 1960s now who's still old enough and still, like, competent that he could talk about modern... The difference is... People like Kelsey Moser can talk about every year of League of Legends. Like, it's why I put myself in there because I, I might not be the biggest expert. I'll tell you what, I did watch all the games, don't I was there the whole time. I knew all the players. So that's already a concern. And the reason why I bring that up is... I'll just be straight up cards on the table. I don't believe this is real. I think this is absolutely just fucking fugazi excuse to backdoor selling a load of faker mm. skins because this is the timing that's so fucking suspicious. So wait a minute. Does everyone remember this? I, You know, it's one thing that's really annoying about me. It's why people should never fuck with me in the esports industry because I'll always remember that little detail like an episode of fucking Poirot that gives the whole game away. I can always remember things early in the plot and I always think like an episode of Poirot that'll probably come in useful later. Make a mental note of that. So I'll tell you one thing I made a mental note of that immediately the alarm bells went off when this was announced was this was announced as though the skin thing is a secondary element. Yes. Like, hey, cool, and we're also going to give you skins. No, 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 no. Because do you remember when Faker won Worlds at the end of last year, obviously everyone said, including Nymeria, who's obviously a massive Faker fan and Ari specialist, right? Well, he's going to pick the Ari skin now. He's been waiting all these years and Faker even suggested in interviews that indeed is what he was going to do. But then magically, Faker had to go for what? Wasn't it like an Oriana skin yeah, or something? Yeah. They like basically had Faker sort of last minute switch up, which he can do. People have done that in the past. But the way he even did it was, I'm almost certain there's an interview where it was even implied by what he said, sort of like... Someone from Riot sort of told me, no, no, don't take the yeah. RE skin now. Take a different champion. So my problem here is this Fox drop. That suggests to me that someone didn't independently think what I think is true, which is we need a Hall of Fame in esports and let's celebrate the greatest players and let's actually start the process, like Rich says, of processing all the best players ever. And if we do a good job, by the way, if we catch up in the next three or four years, then even when people retire, it'll be like a real sports Hall of Fame. We've put them in a few years after whatever the, whatever the delay period and lag after you retire is, you get put in. So my problem is, this doesn't look like that. This looks like what happened is someone at Riot went, fucking hell, I can't, jackpot. I don't believe it, guys, right? Faker just won Worlds again. You know what we have to do, don't we? Let's just fucking do a cynical skin-based thing so that then we make all the money off him winning Worlds. Because I'll tell you what, by the way, it's obviously amazing he won four. You can never predict he's going to win another one. Like, that's yeah. already, like, you've already hit the absolute jackpot of narratives. So my problem with this is pretty simple. You don't need to do any of this. Like, you didn't need to make a fake Hall of Fame and then force Faker in while he's active to sell skins. You could have just done, like, a legendary skin line and, like, hey, look, here's our... our. Mm -hmm. But my problem is, you, so in doing so, I actually think you have undercut the credibility of this Hall of Fame because if people don't understand, it's not as simple as, like, the premise of, like, the reason in sports they do it is, like, first First of all, even if you really are Michael Jordan, you do actually still have to sit around in a room and do, uh, like do the process like you would have due process of like what was his accomplishments, what was his stats, how long did he play? So even though if you don't know, like in famously in the NBA, for example, if you are literally like a Michael Jordan or Wayne Gretzky type figure, they will like 
essentially waive that like five year period or whatever you were supposed to waive, but you still have to be retired. Yeah. So the reason why it's so significant that you have to be retired is because like Richard said, look, the obvious reason actually, by the way, is actually what Rich suggested. It's not even a game related thing. It's that they don't want you to then go and murder your whole family like Chris Benoit style and then then be like, shit, we just put that guy in the fucking all of food. Because that's going to look really awkward when you do like a savior in Korea. And I can tell you when you used to go in that OGN studio, the stupidest fucking thing was they had a panel with all the champions. And then when you came to the one sell that fit that savior one it's just like redacted like some nightmare stalinist thing where it's just like a blank outline of a person and nobody won that osl like you don't want that so already that's the reason by the way why you wait till they're retired so then you know that like look even if he does some shit in his life after that i'll put him in like before that and just for his career it wasn't anything to do with that we're not associated but i also think the reason why to bring it all back i actually think this is garbage is because it's like it rich pointed out there it's worse than the idea that like we'll fake us the goat so we can skip all the rules and he just goes in first. No, no. If you start with that compromise, you will compromise every single aspect of the selection. So as as Rich says, here's what they will do. First person will be Faker. The second one will be Uzi I. The third one will be mm -hmm. Bengi. Then the fourth one. You know what I mean? Like, you're just going to do it like that. And in, in doing so, by the way, you will not only never catch up, it's worse than that. You won't even attempt to. Like, if you go with that route, then the people who I'm about to read out, who would be the real first ballot people, would never get in. So I'll tell you literally by all the definitions they've laid out there, the first name who would enter here is Expeke from Spain. That is it. That is the only... He is the winner of the Season 1 Championship, which I don't call the Season 1 World Championship, but they can't stop fucking doing it on broadcast. So if he's your first world champion, and he had a gang of domestic titles, he played quite a few years early on, like, that person was before... Like, Faker wasn't even anyone by the time this guy won. Like, that would literally be your first person in. Like, he's so eligible, he'd fit every criteria. Then you'd go with people like Mad Life. There's an obvious career one that would get in before Faker. Dude, he was in the world final before Faker ever played his first pro game. This guy was a champion. You'd have people, other Koreans obviously would all be on this. Ambition. He won fucking worlds from a roll swap. He was also a great champion early on. He was there way before the rest. You could even maybe go with someone like my boy Flame, one of the best top laners of all time. Totally retired, by the way. People like Smeb, these are all, these are all be names, but obviously I'm, I'm trying to pick the ones. Uh, yeah, there's another one, obviously. Like, uh, By the way, the real joke of it all is, this is why I also pointed out that thing that Rich said, which is, I do think you should be selected. Like, for example, I don't, even though Toys won season two worlds, I don't think he should probably be in the no, Hall of Legends. No, it's like, no. like, again, it can't just be that you won worlds. Similarly, like, I actually do think a borderline person for me would be my boy Froggen, who was really good for a couple of years, but he never won a world or something. You know, he actually didn't win many tournaments. So, again, these would be more borderline. But these people have to be in before Faker because they were even completely active. And so, even that thing of like contributions to the sport, motherfucker, there is no League of Legends for Faker without Expect here, Mad Life. What are we talking about right now? Like, no one would have given a shit about this game. So, I think those names have to go first and the worst thing like I alluded to is some of the names I just listed will never get in this Hall of Fame I'll tell you right now and I'll give you the obvious example because obviously the main shadow looming over this isn't just that it's Faker it's that he's the GOAT right the idea that him being the GOAT means every rule doesn't apply it's the other way around you morons if he's the GOAT all the rules would apply but he'd just get in wouldn't he so the real problem is this I'll give you I'll, two ways of doing this one I'll give you an analogy from another game and I think once I make the analogy you'll immediately get what I'm saying so I'll take you on two different ways we can go either either Starcraft Broodwalks it's an old game where everyone's retired or we can do a modern day one let's do Counter Strike so I'll do Counter Strike first because I'll put under the reference so obviously if you ask people who was the go to Counter Strike everyone's going to say simple right Simple would never be the first name in the Hall of Fame, you idiot. Like, you'd obviously start with people like fucking Heaton. And if you're even going to go, like, not the original character, you'd go with people like Get Right and fucking Forrest and Kenny S. All these names would get in before Simple because of how many people you've got in the backlog. And if you're saying things like contribution to the sport, access, then you don't just go to the top of the list. You also mix that with chronology. I'll give you the Brood War example. I think the Brood War one's even better. The almost undisputed goat of Brood War was Flash. But because he was at the end, you'd obviously start with fucking Boxer, wouldn't you, you morons? You wouldn't go, wait a minute, Boxer, who won his championships in 2001. I better wait. He better be all the way down the list. Let's start with the guy who won most of his titles in 2010. No, you'd go with the one at the beginning, obviously. So the point here is this. I'd flip it the other way around, and I've got one quick other thing to say, which goes like this. You know what I keep pointing out on Twitter? Like, you have to have a better argument than he's the GOAT for why he goes into this hall. And there isn't one. They just keep reiterating to me, but he is the GOAT. But you can't deny he's the GOAT, though. 
it's like that's nothing to do with this criteria so first of all I don't get what the point of that angle is like why him because essentially I'd flip it the other way aside from him being the goal what reason do you offer him going in first I can't think of a single one because I'll give you a quick example of why this whole discussion irritated me because I don't actually think people are even doing analysis or some sort of historical sports context it's not even about sports or esports this is just fucking what the kids call glazing mate mm -hmm. there's a weird thing people do where I just know you don't have a dad in your life mate you're looking for like a father figure when you get some great player in a video game or a sports star by the way sports stars are the worst if you look on Twitter you get someone like Michael Jordan the goat of basketball and bro you actually start talking like he's the god emperor of real life and he should be allowed to do and say anything because he was the best at basketball I'll give you a quick example as soon as you know this example if you know the reference you're going to know exactly what I mean there was a thing that happened over the last year or two where Scotty Pippen the legendary teammate of Michael Jordan basically got cheesed off for Michael Jordan and sort of like dissed him a bunch and sort of said like some quite rude things about him and everyone kept going like oh wow little bro needs to shut the fuck up Jordan just carried his out and what they never knew the whole time you might not even know the story which is a bit subtle actually is one of the reasons why this happened it, it isn't just that they did that documentary which Michael Jordan by the way completely had all creative control over and definitely made himself look like this shit in all the time but supposedly this is real right a lot of people don't know this. Michael Jordan's son just started dating yeah. Scotty Pippen's ex-wife, the mother of his children, right? And everyone acted like, one, no one ever mentioned this context. But then two, they acted like it's irrelevant. Like, wait a minute. You don't think it's relevant that someone might be cheesed off with like a former like brother in arms who's then like his son's your fucking your ex-wife. Like in that scenario, by the way, that's very easy to see why the person would be like a bit bitter. But they all kept talking again as though like, Every single question about Michael Jordan or their re a relationship or careers just goes to a flow chart of like, but who was the goat at the end? And because at the end, it's Michael Jordan. Like, he can do no wrong somehow. So I feel like we're doing the same thing here. We're acting like Cos Fake is the greatest player ever. Like, they're essentially, they're acting like, if I say he doesn't go in first, I'm saying he's not the greatest player. But it was never about, was he the greatest player of all time? So to, I, would, I would just phrase it that way. If anyone says they disagree, I would just say, aside from him being the best... With all those other reasons, why would he be first? Because I, I actually do think it is a big mistake, by the way, to put people in while they're active players. Because it's just unnecessary as well. There's the other reason why it sucks. It's not hockey. No one's going to play for 20 years. So being as this motherfucker is definitely going to retire in, what, the next three years tops? If this was really about greatness, you'd just wait for him to retire and you'd start this process with the names we're talking about. You'd start with the expectors, though. But that's why, to bring it all back, I think it's only about selling the skins. I think the real reason you did this is this, Fox Drop. Because I'll tell you one area they are almost certainly right, which is you will not sell as many skins if he is totally retired and he's washed it at the end yeah. of his career. You will not sell them. Whereas I'll tell you what, that's why I think this is all about the fact he is the current reigning world champion. I think what they saw is, bro, we've just basically been given by life one last chance to make all the faker dollars, as it were. So let's just fucking do it. Let's just get, let's just do like the maximum, like more cynical, like min max now of like the end of his career and just get all the faker fans to buy an Ari skin. But like I say, it wasn't necessary. You could, you could have just done these things separately. You could have just done a faker line if you wanted. So I, I just don't like the idea because it does matter to me that you're sort of fucking with history. Because again, if someone sees that this Hall of Fame in like three or four years does just have Bengi and Faker and Uzi I, they're going to think that was all that League of Legends was. In fact, they're going to think, by the way, it is the worst thing that League of Legends began with Faker and it mm. didn't. Mm. Also, uh, it, by, oh sorry, sorry. No, no. oh no, I was just gonna say. Uh, also, like we cut, like I've seen a few people who've said, like, um, reference that point that Doran made at the end. Said, oh, that's not true though, because it's Faker. You know, he's a eternal ever present. We've talked about this on a, a different shows before, where we said, well, actually, even people who were like at the absolute peak of popularity, almost fake is in the West at least as big as Faker in terms of you. You know, go see how many viewers Dyrus gets on his stream now. Have fun trying to sell a Dyrus skin now. I'm not saying that he should be in the Hall of Fame, oh, by the way, no. but that's the point. Like, they are absolute min-maxing this perfect window of... Uh, of and, and also, by the way, I've told this story before. I know for a fact that this was at least, like, part of their whole way of thinking. And by the way, again, it's a free game with optional cosmetic purchases. I'm not saying this shouldn't be a thing, right? But... They used oh, to come. I tell them the skin's a great idea. It's just obviously I don't like the yeah. way they've done it. Yeah. Uh, they they used to come into our uh, LEC green rooms while we were like prepping for games, like on the day, like an hour or l even less before we're about to go on stage. And some rep from Riot would, you know, tap on the door, and be like, "You're right, guys. How's it going? Anyone need a coffee? You're good here. Yeah, cool." Starts walking out, then does a Columbo. By the way, before I forget. Ha, you seen that crazy new patch they've done on Corky? Pretty wild, eh? He's looking pretty strong. 
Oh well, my God. are you considering, you know, Febby, you like to play Corky. Considering playing that champ today, do you think? What do you reckon? How do you reckon draft's going to go? And they're like, uh, yeah. It's like, well, you know, if you do, you know, we've got that new skin. Like, people have talked about how the, the old one was bugged, but I promise you it's not. So if you if you did feel like locking that, I, don't worry. There won't be any issues. You know, it, it's fine. It's, it's not a banned skin. Just the uh, Thupa port, you know. And then they sort of walk off. This used to happen, like, all the time, by the way, that they just basically try and get you to play their new skins on stage in actual competitive scenarios to influence your draft. I just like the way the Riot rep essentially acts like the Mr. Paperclip guy from, like, Microsoft <laughs> or whatever. Like, I see you're about to play cocky there. Have you thought about the old skin? I love it. I love it. That's good. That's exactly how it was as well, though. It's like, you know, go, go see and then, yeah. So this is absolutely the angle. By the way, something else that I just think is kind of sad is, like, you know, in the NFL... It, people find like the actual place itself like canton for anyone who doesn't know what it's called is this really cool place where you have like these bronze um oh, you know, statue awesome, heads it? and yeah. everything and i'm just thinking like if you don't induct people in the proper order you can never even have like a oh, really no. cool thing like that you like yeah. you want to go through and see the who's who almost like yes. hollywood row or something but preferably not like that because that's pretty shit but this really cool sort of uh you know, tapestry of the history of League of Legends, which fits when people were inducted with when their careers were. If you've got Faker at the start of it, the whole thing's just whack and out of sync and just horrible. Like, I I really, yeah, I, I, I just think it's, it's completely ridiculous. And I think that they've just, as Thorin said, I think it is just a cynical sort of uh, cash thing. To the extent that also they fucked around and called it Hall of Legends. Like, we get it, your name is League of Legends, but every other reputable competitive sport has not had the ego to put some weird little suffix or personalized prefix on what their thing is. It's just Hall of Fame because that is the universal term for greatness in that sport. And you've chucked legends on the end. Like that's so classless. Like that's really tacky. So yeah, to me, this whole thing was like cash grab from the start. I think it's a fair way to, to look at it. I would agree. And I just think it sets a strange precedent for the future inductees because surely you're not going to make a skin for every future Hall of Fame person. But like, it doesn't even make economical sense for Riot to do that. Like you say, let's say we put XPK in. We're going to have XPK skins for Cassidy or something It doesn't seem like, like people will buy really old XPK skins. Right. Exactly. That's what I mean. Exactly. That's why I say I don't know why the two things are connected. Like, I'll give... By the way, here's the obvious other thing I didn't even think to say before. If we're going to do this by people who are active players, if I'm anyone else legendary, I'm like, where's man? Like, by the way, I'll tell you the obvious person. If I'm deft, where the fuck's my skin? Where's my, like, Jinx or Caitlyn skin, mate? Like, didn't I win Worlds two years ago? Did I, haven't I had, like, a legendary career? I, I still like, like, why don't I get it? Because that's the real question. If this isn't just about selling faker skins, why why doesn't get, Deft get one? It's, wouldn't he be, like, first ballot by this logic, you know? Yeah. I or who's the eye, all the ones that are still around? Everyone who's out there? It could have been a really cool, like, concept if you just had, like, like you said, doing, like, a legendary skin line. Oh, that's weird phrasing because there's already, like, legendary skin lines. But, you know, like... Or whatever you want to call it, yeah. Whatever, we'll say it's legendary skin line. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then, then there's like, I don't know, because they often release uh, skin lines with like, you know, four different champions, maybe four oh. or five different champions come out like Elderwood or Project or whatever. Well, how about like, you know, like a Legends one? And then you do, you chuck in Faker, Uzi Eye, fucking x Pecker, one from each region or something like that. Maybe yeah, exactly. even then you chuck in someone like Toys, right? Because of his performances in the first one. I know it's a bit extreme, but you get a representative. No, I mean, you could do Maple for that or something. Yeah, you could, you could yeah, be yeah, yeah. Just people yeah, out there, yeah. Like Castle well, or like, someone, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you chuck one in from, yep. from NA as well. Like, Bjergsen gets one as well. Like, you know By the way, I think that approach would even be good, Fox, because notice you're trying to actually have, like, a, a like a cogent yeah. reasoning. Like, in your case, you could obviously put, like, a double if water, fucking Bjergsen yeah. or something, of course, yeah. Yeah, I think that totally would be a really cool idea, but and the thing is, like, I watched the trailer and stuff like that. I thought it's like, obviously, I share the same concerns as you. Like for me, though, the the kind of like legitimacy. <laughs> By the way, do you want to know something hilarious? It wasn't me who pointed this out. Someone on Twitter did. But if you go and yeah. watch, it is true. Also, whoever made the video, it's called like the players to show like what players Faker made, right? Think about it, right? By the way, by definition, Faker is easily top five best highlights ever in the history because of just the length of his career for fuck's sake. Like if people don't know, in the modern day, still even every now and then that's like an Ari game or something that's insane, right? There's a clip in this video that is mental. It is where, for real, he just gets a normal fucking kill on Velkos. Go watch this clip. He misses every ability. He just then goes, and then because he misses everything, he just does the ult and it just kills him at max distance. Like, mm -hmm. this is one of the shittest highlight players I've ever seen. But it's like whoever made it was just, this is also the other thing I have a problem with. That makes it look like a rush job. Like, bro, it's faker. If you're making a video of the faker players, 
please just go and get the best 10 best players he ever made. You know what I mean? Like, why are you putting like a random shit clip in? Like, what? It just makes it look like you just fucking did it as an afterthought or something. I thought you were going in a different direction than oh, that, which no. is I saw, I saw an, a clip where they interviewed Cadrill and asked him about his favorite faker moment. And instead of picking like okay. any clip or like did he pick? ZBZ or Ribbon Dodge, yeah. he said, when he bit into raw broccoli after the 2015 oh, so he's final. Oh, has been like a meme, right? Okay. Like, no, but he doesn't What's express. Was I think he had it on stage or something. Yeah, but he doesn't. He doesn't even express it like he's joking. Oh, right. It's just like, oh, such a magical moment. He does the roly poly <laughs> in the start, and then he bites the into the broccoli yeah. at the end. I'm like. Fuck oh, it, hell. Can we do a rerun, please? Take two. Like, what's going on? <laughs> Raw broccoli. In fact, if you actually feel that way, we should actually have his busk, like, be him biting into broccoli at fucking the esports equivalent of Canton. See how that ages. Why By the not? way, you know, Fuck the other it. thing I hate as well is that, like, one thing I've always thought sucks about Riot and their esports because they have this insane control. Bro, they never use it for good. Like, you know this, Rich. Like, one of the most annoying things is if you're not the TO or the game dev, you can't tell a player to do something. You have to negotiate and get them to buy in. Right? The reason I hate shit like this as well is because you know what that video should be? It shouldn't just be the 10 players we've all seen a faker. It should be those players, but then while they're playing, you have talking heads who literally mm -hmm. are Mad Life and fucking Deft and Uzi Eye and all the, like, great players, like, giving their thoughts on faker. And you just... By the way, that's, like, the most slam dunk video. Riot are the only people who could do it as well, but they're like in the, the scale, and it'd also just be sick. Like, who the yeah. fuck? I would love that. I would actually genuinely love to watch that video because I actually uh... do think the key point to make here is the one you made before, bro. They'll never get through the backlog if they start with Faker and if they start based on who they can sell skins of. Because, like, bro, think of the names I didn't even put up, like Wei Zhao and fucking Clear Love and be like, bro, the, like the amount. There's just too many. Remember, League of Legends started in 2009. Even like Pro League is like 2011 for fuck's sake. Like, there's so many years of great players. It's like. That's why I say it. I feel like, also, here's the other problem. The reason I know you're never going to get through the backlog, you start with one person. Yeah. <laughs> you got, like, fucking 12 years to do. You start with, yeah. you need to start for real with, like, 10 people. Because it's like the eSports one. If you look at, like, the eSports Awards Hall of Fame, their problem as well is, and they've already fucked this up, I kept, when I was on their panel, I used to stress to them, you've got to make, like, the first, like, sort of six or seven have to only be people from the 2000s because we're never going to get to them otherwise. They did that the first few years. Then when I wasn't involved anymore, I noticed they're already bringing people in who started doing shit in, like, 2015. Well, it's over at that point in time. That guy from 2007 may as well kiss goodbye. And by the way, that is actually insane if you want to tie this to a sporting context. Because could you imagine how whack it would be, Rich, if I started the NFL Hall of Fame today, and today I'm putting, like, Odell Beckham Jr. in, and then, like Jim Brown will never be in my Hall of Fame because no kid knows him. It's so long ago. I can't make any money. There's no market in pop, and his numbers wouldn't look as sick as all of you know, like Derek Henry or something like. The, shit like that is actually offensive if you care about history because people always say this shit, right? It's like that thing with Faker won that esports awards PC player. They're like, well, who cares? Listen, if you don't care, then sit the fuck out. I literally gave my life to esports history. So guess what? I do care about this particular topic because I do know, as I said, that in five, ten years, there'll be someone who'll pull up a wiki who's never going to go back and watch League of yeah. Legends and he'll just look at who these people are. And then when he sees that, like, Bengi's in there, but, like, fucking Mad Life isn't, then he's going to think Bengi was the greatest fucking player after Faker or something like that from Korea. Or some shit like that. Whereas I want the historical record to sort of be vaguely accurate. So I, as you say about the voting, I do get, even though I know to everyone else, it doesn't matter. I do get mad triggered when I pull up that EU one and then someone from fucking Greece voted everyone from Greece as his all pro players. Like, that does tilt me, mate. That actually, like, that actually, it's one thing if someone genuinely just thought that, like, some, like, Cadrill did it and he put the guy from Greece there. That's a real vote. The other one, that's just so fucking, that shouldn't even be allowed. It should just be dismissed immediately. Yeah, it seems it's similar vibes to the to the all star votes for sure. And like oh, I know sure. you guys because it is like the integrity of of what it means from a from a grand esports yes. standpoint. But I just don't think Riot don't care. They don't, that is not in, in my opinion. That's absolutely not what they're uh, what they're even thinking about or looking at. By the way, it's I know just... like the idea that any budget or like time and efforts has gone into making like an re cinematic around this is mental to me. Like actually mental. Like when you think about the fact. By the way, let me remind people there were massive, large scale layoffs at Riot Studio like in the past year, yeah, and yeah. there is a cinematic high production video that has been created about Ari in fucking League of Legends to do spuriously connected to like Faker being put into the Hall of Fame. Like that is so mental when you actually think about it and how they're prioritizing. We missed 
a play in a game five because of a black screen because of layoffs. But the payoff is we get a trailer for an Ari skin. That is insane. It is really life. sad, by the way, if you notice that like League of Legends esports literally jumped the shark and we're in like fucking austerity measures now. Like it's actually getting worse. Like we're regressing. Because I agree with you, by the way, the amount of like games I've now watched where it's only if you watch core streamers that they actually have the balls to call this shit out. Bro, you should see how bad games have gotten. Like when they do MSI matches now, they'll be like watching a replay while like a real yeah. fight's happening. Like someone's getting like a key kill. You're like, what's going on here? Like this is like basic shit. I thought we nailed like 10 years ago or something. Like this is all, this was all squared away in esports production. Why have we gone backwards? The fuck? Yeah, we haven't had pro for have. like seven years at this point as well. It's just like, we're just downgrading everywhere. But yeah. you know, those skin cinematics keep on coming and they're getting better, aren't they? So they will make fucking tons off this oh, game. Yeah. Like, up seeing. So that part, they, they win on that one. They win. You win, Riot Games. You win. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it, as well, how they, uh, like you, you mentioned, Faker kind of wanted the Ari skin for his world skin. And let's be honest, probably realistically what happened was Riot was like, no, nah, don't do that. We've got one for you coming up. Because they, Ari they, it would be the most best-selling champion. Like, yep. Ari is so popular in League of Legends. Like, she, by she, the way, still everywhere. strap in for all the cladly dressed female characters that these Hall of Famers are going to suddenly pick out of nowhere. Oh, sure. That's uh, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure Faker also did like a wink, wink, nudge, nudge when he changed his skin to Ori and said like basically like watch this space or something. something I'm pretty, like I'm pretty, people yes. already knew. I'm pretty I sure. Think it was even, you might, you're right. I think it was even something like you know if you wanted the Ari skin, like watch out or something. Yeah, it was, yeah, it, yeah. I think it was even like framed that way. I think you're right. Mm. All right, anything else on that topic? Or we get By the to way, here's the, other reason, here's the other thing as well. Okay. If it's about selling skins, I also do hate that Riot is one of the worst companies of all time for like that meme of like, fucking please take my money. Like, mm. bro, the joke is I would, I myself would have bought like a dope Mad Life Blitzcrank skin oh, yeah. if you'd have, for any time in the last 10 years, but I just can't fucking buy it from them. So this is why I hate the idea they have to make some like fake Hall of Legends to just sell me that shit. Like, just sell me it. For, by the way, it's same with Uzi Ivan skin, fucking mm. Double Lift Caitlin. Like, just put them all on the fucking insight already you idiots let's put them all up they haven't been the best at monetizing they haven't been very good at all have they products. no it was it's i remember like it was like five or six years until they actually started releasing merch it was almost oh, like they had a, it, yeah. like a philosophy against it like no we don't oh, it's true it. back in the day like <laughs> to actually get the t-shirts and the jersey you had to like go to an event or win a competition yeah, yeah it was only, yeah, available, true. only available in like it's true. Stuff. it was really strange I, I don't know why like you'd go into sh i remember going to shops and seeing um like Minecraft plushies and things like this in the store. I'm thinking, wow, this is crazy. That game is getting really big. And I think, why the fuck is League not in this? And now everything, every game, like we get Fortnite stuff, Roblox, I don't know. You just get so so much, like gaming's like the new cartoons, basically, for for finding plushies and, and, and toys and things like that. It's like, why was Riot just not doing this before? But well, now you can buy a fucking plastic Jinx statue for like 200 quid if you want. Mm. Brilliant. Exactly. Uh, don't look behind me. Oh, you can't really see behind me, but yeah, I have a few of those. Although I got sent them for free, so. Obviously, the joke is the real product that would sell an infinite amount from Faker is some sort of like Funko Pop that you just put a stem, a stem of broccoli in the hand and it grows. <laughs> like, you know, like when you're a little kid, you put that crest yeah. on the shelf in school. Mm. You just grow the broccoli, don't you? A little fucking... And then obviously, you tie it into a joke. Then they can all give themselves a little Zuma cut with that fucking... With the scissors, can't we? <laughs> the nice scissors, there you go. <laughs> so, oh, I, I just a bit reckless watching this and thinking, oh, time to sell bath water. Right, that's coming. I, I can see it. And then Nemesis watches. He he then on his stream watches the video of Reckless and goes, "That's an autistic thing to say." I knew that. <laughs> and by the way, that is still the maddest, most out of pocket comment I probably ever said by someone doing a react stream in esports. Just him going, "Yeah, I always knew he was autistic." So like, <laughs> he only just found out you mad cunt. What are you talking about? That's still that's the, even though it is the thing. I don't like him in, in general, but normally he's not that wild, Nemesis. But that, what a weird comment that was to make. It's so weird. The best man. thing was Nemesis was a guy who I had seen like being a dick, let's say, for a really long time. Then hadn't seen him for years, and basically everyone told me he's really matured now. He's a really nice oh, guy. Right. And then that is the very next clip I saw, right. like three <laughs> years removed. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, time to change channel. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks. Yeah, good old Nemesis. I'm I I remember making a a tweet about how uh, there's no real. There's not great content in League of Legends. Someone was like bemoaning, like, oh, there's not great content. Like, oh. League doesn't do content really well. You've got to use the like, organization is so bad at it. And I just made sure I was like, look, the players just aren't interesting. The personalities in League oh. of Legends suck. Yeah, you know, yeah. Like, we have maybe one or two in the entire ecosystem. Yep. 
who are good personalities, right? And the rest of it is like you're kind of ironically laughing at them. So, you know, Gosh. whatever. And I said that. I was like, look, the reality is how do you make good content when you can, there's only so many ways to polish a turd? Uh, and so, but then Nemesis chimed in and he replied to it and said, this is false. Uh, there's just no incentive for players to work in the thing. And I, I was sitting there, I was like, well, you know, both could be true. But I was thinking, I was like, you are the prime example of someone with not only negative, uh, sorry, not only no charisma, negative levels of charisma. Oh, true. Like, literally. True. Yeah. You know, like the only reason that he's had, not the only reason he's had a successful career, like he's a good player when he was, when he was playing and the people always float his name around to come back. Like, he's a quality player. But like it's not personality. He's he's not a personality. No, no, he doesn't have charisma. It's you know he he was LS was you know paired with him and kind of made him being popular for because you know that that kind of thing. It was just like bro, do you not <laughs> can you not process this? Like do you not understand? Like surely you understand. But that no, that is the like, ultimate irony. Though. Like... He doesn't understand. Like he genuinely probably thinks if you were to like polygraph him that his success like post playing is un like not attached to LS. He probably think it'll be like but my stream is still big and I no longer talk to LS regularly so that is impossible. Like he he genuinely probably thinks that his success is completely independent from getting boosted by LS for like 3 straight years. I just yeah it's something. Let's move on. Some more League of Legends, mind you, but uh, we've got the rage of the Hall of Legends out out of there. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about the uh, the esports World Cup, shall we? This is the the massive um, esports tournament being held in the in Saudi. Um, it's been rumored. I'm not sure if it's proper reported or rumored or I don't know yet. But top two teams from all the regions are going to be invited there. So some big organizations will be going through. The best teams will be duking it out. Riot have finally decided this is the time that they'll let external um, tournament uh, organizers use teams that are in their ecosystem because this time it's about the growth of uh, esports and definitely not because of any Saudi money that might be thrown their way. Either way. Um, in North America, FlyQuest is going to be one of the teams that will be representing uh, the LCS at the Esports World Cup. Um, but they put out a statement here because obviously the Esports World Cup, it's it's controversial. Saudi and Esports is always a big controversial thing. Uh, and they said here, we understand that the EWC is a unique proposition. And as such, we will encourage each one of our players, coaches and staff members to decide for themselves whether they want to participate. I think the idea from FlyQuest saying this is sort of like, well, we're going to do it because money, but also if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. But there's kind of an undertone here, which has been picked up from from uh, social media and from fans saying like, well, you know, we've given an opportunity to say no. If you're coming, then you're on board. Almost throwing people under the bus. If they do go, then just just so you know, guys, they could have not gone if they didn't want to, but they've chosen to go instead. In, like I said, a very controversial fashion, as is this esports World Cup. Do you, just tell me your your thoughts about this. A bit of the controversy around uh, FlyQuest's statement here and uh, and the esports World Cup as a whole. Do you kind of disagree with putting a statement like this out there? Um, yeah. You know, what are what are your thoughts? Like, I, it almost feels it almost reads like. Sort of like virtual signaling, like FlyQuest is trying to cover their own ass a little bit, saying like, you know, yeah, we're going to, it's a good opportunity, so we're going to go through with it, but they don't have to. So it's sort of like, don't hate us too much for going, but actually kind of doesn't reflect great on the players themselves. I don't know. That's just kind of my, my initial instinct here. What do you guys think, Dorian? Hit me up. I think it's actually more complicated than people realize. Because to me, one of the things I am actually a big fan of is I love reading uh, press releases or like public statements. Because in my opinion, you unless you just completely lie, what you what you're actually saying or what you're actually doing always slips through the cracks. Now it won't be seen by ninety nine percent of people who read the tweet or the press release. So you will effectively get what you want. You will message the way you want to. But the people who know the industry will always be able to see what you're doing. So like first things first, even the framing of this is mental if you think about it. Like here's why, because the implication is like what are you grant? What is the proposition you're making? What are you granting these players? Like you're first of all acting like the default scenario we should all think is normal is that you would have forced them to play that already is mental like wait a minute right bear in mind they're not saying right 
unrelated to anything to do with the Esports World Cup, from now on, we will allow our pro players to choose which events they attend based on whether they're comfortable. By the way, that would be a very clever way to get the same effect, but you just make it seem like you were doing it in general. But you're not even putting that on the table. You know why? Because you don't want them to choose the other events. The other events are events you must have them go to because you've already decided you're partnered with that league. That's the league you want to be in. That's where all the prize money is. So already, let's be clear, you're only offering them to choose not to go because you yourself know this might actually be dangerous for them. And even worse, it's implied, you know there might be a very serious consequence, which afterwards you want like this to retroactively also already show, well, I wasn't culpable for that though. That already is so fucking off the reservation, I can't handle it. Because here's the, here's the weirdest thing about the way this is phrased. Do you know what my statement would be as an org? Two, there's two versions. It would either be there have been concerns about the safety of competitors at events like the Esports World Cup in Saudi Arabia, but I can promise that any event my team attends, I can guarantee the safety of my players as competitors through the organization like the leagues that I've partnered with. I've gotten assurances from them because remember, this is the part that is so sinister about this, guys. Here's how you know it's sports washing because this isn't like those things. But what about when the US... Yeah, and what about when the American Air Force sponsors an event? Yeah, here's the difference, right? You can't ever go to the person running the ESL event sponsored by US Air Force and go, can you guarantee that the laws of the USA won't apply if my player... No, because that wouldn't even be a consideration because what power do they have over the government? The government literally run and own what the company that does the Esports World Cup, guys. They run and own ESL. Like, as in, it would be the easiest thing in the world even just to lie and just go, we guarantee your safety. But the fact that they won't do that, and that is now provoking this response, which I'm telling you, this is someone trying to back to the future, pr protect themselves before something terrible happens. That is so fucking insane to even wrap my head around because I actually feel like it's the opposite of what you're trying to message. You're trying to message, I don't think there's going to be any problem, but you know what? To make it extra safe, let's let them choose if they're comfortable or not. My question would be, why would I ever not be comfortable attending an event that you want me to go to? That's the real fucking fire under the face that I'd flip it backwards. Then how about this angle? There's the notion, right, that you're choosing not to attend, right? Here's something people haven't thought through at all. If one player actually chooses not to attend from FlyQuest, we now know forever that they chose this. It's even now they're going to be obviously separated from their teammates who go to the event. And here's another problem, by the way. You've now opened an even bigger can of worms for that guy or girl. Because now, how do they ever attend an event in Saudi? They've already turned one down. I can tell you, go ask people like Frankie Ward if you actually want to put your name on record and then change your mind later. You don't. I can tell you right now. Everyone who does this, including now FlyQuest, I would say Team Liquid did it before, the joke is, even by actually by trying to be socially conscious, they've made themselves even more of a lightning rod. Like every org, by the way, that didn't tweet about this doesn't get a response. So they all get to be potentially worse than FlyQuest, but get away with it. Yeah. FlyQuest have tried to have their cake and eat it and be moral and good guys and the message to the community and being transparent. But in doing so, the problem is they've said the quiet part out loud. This is the part we all know for all these orgs. By the way, I'm pretty sure there's no org in any part of esports. If someone came and said, hello, I identify as transgender and I don't want to attend this event because I'm worried they might kill me or put me in prison. I don't think there's an org in the world where they're actually like, now, now, shut the fuck up and just play the game. Like, no one's going to do that already. So the reason why I think this is so sinister is everyone had that option the whole time. But then lastly, I'll end on this note. There's so many things. I'll let Rich have a bunch. We can bounce back and forth. The other thing I'll say at the end is this. I don't even believe it's a good faith statement. And I'll tell you why. Because I won't say the names of who, but the very, very big name people who run team orgs that I actually do respect, some I'm even friendly with, that are attending these events. I've said to them privately, it's like, remember, these are just humans. They can have conversations and we off the record, they will say to me, come on, Thorin, like, you know, if we don't attend those events, yeah, we make like a political statement, but they always tell me two things. One, we won't actually change any of the laws. So all that happens is we'll just be martyrs for nothing. And then are you ready for the kicker? And the kicker just blows my mind. They go, or two, then at that point, we won't be in any of the biggest tournaments. So at that point, we won't even be in esports, basically. So our choice is like, stay in esports and do this or don't. And I always want to tell them, like, what the fuck is the implication of that second part? So essentially, how bad would it have to get before you'd go, 
worth leaving his spot. There, as far as I can tell, there is no limit. It didn't have to actually just like kill one out of three people when you arrived at the event or something mentally. You know, at this point, by the way, that sounds like a joke, but how, how far would it have to go before you'd ever yeah. go? It's not worth being in eSports. So I'll just take their own premise that I know they actually believe in at the end and apply it to this situation. So you ready, Mitch? I'm this big mystical person who has both the agency and the fucking balls and, the, and they'll have to have mega mental fortitude to actually decide I'm going to choose through my org. To I agree with you. I choose not to attend this one event, this one time. Right, here's the question. You're going to let me do that every single time? Nah, this is why it's a bad faith fucking premise. Because I'll tell you what, Rich, if I turn down five of these Saudi events, maybe one in Dota, one in League, eventually, surely eventually you can't hire me anymore. Now I can't even do my job for you and attend events. And then lastly, I'll just throw this in there because it's just one of these things where I'm not a legal expert, so it might be nothing, but it might be food for thought for people. One of the things that Sean Gares told me years ago when they first did like the Pro Tour Flashpoint called PEA, where it was going to be an American organization that would be all the American orgs. And the idea was if you were an American Counter-Strike player, you'd play in that league instead of ESL Pro League and they'd give you a different pay cut, right? One of the reasons why Sean Gares told me back then that he went like to war with TSM, which was his org at the time, over the fact they wouldn't play in this league is because he said, if you ever looked up the laws in America of like how contractors worked, he actually said, since we're all got like contractor or... Um, co contracts obviously like we're not like full-time employees he even said like in america or at least in like la or, whatever, or california he said one of the stipulations was that because you're a contractor they couldn't like dictate every aspect of your career they couldn't tell you that like, you have to work here and be there on this time he said it was more like you had to like give them like an overview of like you have to complete this task by this data and then it was like up to the contractor how he did that right like a builder or an electric and so essentially i'd even throw that out there i'm not even sure they actually are allowed to force you to compete in these countries anyway so to me the whole thing seems like such a mess and it's it's like so obviously like you're trying to be transparent while clearly not saying like the most important parts of what you're inferring here. And actually, even though, I, by the way, of all the orgs, I actually do think FlyQuest seems like one of the better ones. There just seems like if even you're sort of like almost using euphemisms to get around the very sinister elements of this, that 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 alarms me a bit because this implies to me, like I say, people can say I'm taking like extreme read on it. I do take this read as because you can't guarantee these people's safety, you know something might happen to one of them. Yeah. So you want it to be that at the end, it's like, he chose it. I didn't make him sign up to the war. You want it to be like that, which, I, I, like I say, I can't even get in that headspace because I'm not even some walk activist guy who says I believe in this shit. But even from my perspective, it's like, how could you even think you believe these things, but then say it this particular way? Because it, it actually infers you also don't give a flying fuck about all these people. That's why you, you want it to be like, I, bro, you're almost on some rocky fall. Like, if he dies, he dies. He signed up to the event like... No, he shouldn't die. How about let's not do events when people die? And that's the first point for me. So, yeah, there you go. I think there's a lot on this one. What about you then, Ritz? What are your thoughts on this statement? Yeah, I'm reminded of that, uh, well, now kind of like infamous interview, which I thought was brilliant, where for people who don't know or don't follow golf or whatever, obviously there was this split between LIV, which is a Saudi-funded thing, and the PGA Tour. And Phil Mickel Mickelson was someone who was initially against going over to LIV or whatever, and then right. eventually he essentially there's a big enough bag and eventually he just came and he's like, oh, fuck it. And he's at this press conference as he's like announcing that he's joining LIV. And this relentless reporter who will just not let it go is just like, so Phil, like what is the exact ratio of like money to people dying that, you know, would be acceptable or like not accept Like what was the final dollar yeah, sure, that tipped it? So yeah. like, you know, the murders would count. Right. And obviously he's trying to dodge it and go full PR. Order. But yeah, that is the, obviously always the underlying question. I actually think there's an alternate angle because obviously Thorin's already outlined all the safety stuff or whatever. I think you can also read this a second way or in a sort of two pronged way where it's also like, any criticism that we may get just from attending event, forget all the safety stuff, or whatever, just like, you know, the Saudi, um, you know, laws and how people are treated and so on, that we're just going to completely absolve ourselves from any of that responsibility or co-signing any of that stuff and saying, if the players go, that's of their volition. We're not saying they should go or not go. We're saying if they want to go, they are, you know, adult humans and they can decide if they want to go. They're trying to have their cake and eat it again in, a, in another way as well, I think, where it's like, oh, we gave them complete free choice for them to make their own ethical decisions. Basically saying we are not sending the team as an organization saying you have to play the tournament or whatever. We are the and again, remember, FlyQuest is a very sort of like hipster brand in, in esports, very much like save the earth, you know, uh, equality for all, whatever. And I think they do not want to have anything in writing ever, which is like, we are complicit 
with the Saudis. And the way that we circumvent this is by saying, oh, no, 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 no. You thought we decided that they go to Saudi. No, we just value their own personal freedoms to make a decision more than anything else. So actually, if they go to Saudi, it's because they chose to go to Saudi, not us. So even now, they after the facts, if anyone says like, how can you look, for example, it's Pride Month next month, right? They're going to do whatever else does and do their own pride things or whatever. And there'll be loads of comments saying, but you sent these or you allowed your players to go to this. And they'll be like, actually, we put out a statement saying anyone who decides to go, that's of their own volition. And we sort of distance ourselves from that. We never said that they had to go to Saudi. We never endorsed that. The players made decisions as individuals. And they also cynically know that if when all things are equal, putting safety specifics and stuff to one side, Players want to play. They want to play big tournaments. They want to play prestigious tournaments. They want to play for a lot of money. The default reaction from the players will be they want to play this tournament. And the org know this. So they're saying like, oh, they want to play. that's on them. We didn't tell them to play. They made a decision to play. So if you're angry at us for sending them to Saudi, we didn't send them to Saudi. We're like, sure, we may have funded it or whatever, you know, the play for the flights. Although actually probably Saudis will pay for the flights, but whatever. Like, yeah, sure, we're aware of it and they're playing under our banner. But we specifically said, you know, we've removed ourselves from the situation and it's a player to player decision that's being made. And I think that is just so weaselly and cowardly. It's just beyond belief. And I can see the headspace they were in when they constructed it. The problem is they did this classic thing where they, you know, they got people in a room and they isolated themselves and like, what do we want to project? What do we want people to think? And they all came to an agreement, but then they never read it with fresh eyes. So actually almost everyone immediately who's not some sort of, you know, cynical money grabbing, whatever, that, that being the aspect they were initially viewing it from, just reads it and sees all the social and safety issues immediately. And is like, okay, we have a problem with this. And they're like, ah, fuck. We just kind of wanted to basically cover our own asses and that has backfired horrendously. So yeah, I think this is a really bad look. And by the way, what I would have done, what I genuinely would have done if I was in their position, and again, like it's really easy to throw, um, you know, uh, sort of accusations towards individuals and be like, oh, you work for this company, which means blah, blah. again, guys, like you are employed. It, it, you can just read your fucking contract and it'll basically say that if you work for a company, there are certain things that you need to do to not sabotage. You're not allowed to just sabotage your company whenever you fucking feel like it, right? So that is always ever present. And if I was in that position and I know that I have to basically soft endorse going, I would basically say, this is the way, this is the path down which esports is going. This is a huge tournament. This is a, a massive opportunity for the players. And we will certainly not be, you know, judging them or, or on this basis. Like we are happy for them to play the tournament if they want to play the tournament. Like I would say the same thing, but in a much less divorcing myself from the situation way i would basically say yes we are happy for them to play the tournament this is you know how esports is we've been around for a while it's moving in a particular direction we want to be you know whatever deliver high quality play at the biggest tournaments in the world for the fans and this is just the current direction of esports and we endorse the decisions or we are happy with whatever the decisions players want to make we will back them fully but the problem is they're not even saying stuff like that they're just basically saying we're completely hands off if a player wants to go he can go and I think that is just the worst of all worlds and they haven't brought it through and they try too hard to play the hand of this is nothing to do with us. Safety, they get hurt, nothing to do with us. Oh, all the moralistic issues that are going on in that part of the world, nothing to do with us. Anything that happens, there you go, guys. There's the players. Have a go at them. And obviously, they're not literally saying that, but in essence, they are actually saying that. They're like, redirect all your complaints to those five guys. And that is really fucked up. By the way, there's also another thing I think is bad faith, which is this only works even as a concept if you're in a fucking 1v1 game. If you're a StarCraft player, a fight game. If you're in a yeah. fucking 5v5 team game, how can I want any one of the five players go, sorry guys, you're all attending, but I'm not. Like, And by the way, already we're not in a fair scenario because all five players aren't going to be trans slash non-binary slash women. So it already doesn't make any fucking sense of premise. Like, baked into that premise is a sort of soft coercion 
which is that four of my teammates say yes, and my org wants to attend. And it's the biggest, like, like by the way, what for some like Dota or CS or League, it's like an yeah. enormous tournament. Like, at that point, I'm almost priced in to attend anyway, or as I said earlier, and I'm just essentially paving my way out of this team. Like, at the end of the day, they're just going to, because there's the other thing people don't want to think through. People are acting like, like, by the way, the other thing that's so bad faith is not a single fucking person in FlyQuest is going to publicly say I'm not attending the event. Every player is going to attend. They just did this to cover their asses. But let's imagine they did actually choose not to attend. Well, eventually, if I'm FlyQuest, I would actually, like Rich says, I don't know if they're a public company, but like any public trading company, eventually I have a fiduciary responsibility to the fucking shareholders. Like, yeah. I can't actually let my star player just say, ah, I'm going to choose not to attend again. And it's like, bro, you're doing all like half the events are in Saudi now. I need you there. Like, eventually, like, you'd actually logically have to fire that guy by the way how could you ever fire him for that reason that's going to look great in the west i uh, fired him because he was un he felt unsafe attending a country where they might do something to him um <laughs> what would they do something to him oh yeah i couldn't guarantee his safety but yeah he's fired anyway like that isn't that the mother of all like bad pr fucking moments so to me i think the worst thing about this is it's actually just a lap that there is even like this big deliberation i don't think a single player is going to say no i actually think the saddest thing about this whole equation i always keep saying this i'll bring it back again because god forbid it happens i'm going to be the one who predicts it. The worst thing about this is actually this. There won't be any issues, Rich, for 99.9999999% recurring people who go to this event from the West. Because one, you're from the West. Two, you're going to this event. And actually, believe it or not, the fact it's owned by the Saudi government on some level actually helps you. That means they won't want an international incident. Yeah. But the, So on the one hand, it's a bit of a bomber because if you all believe the shit you're going to pretend you do in a month from now, you'd never be able to attend the event or you'd have to say something. But the one thing I do worry about, and I've always said this, this is why I do all always come back to the safety angle, is eventually there's going to be one person out there who naively did believe everything he saw on the screen his whole life and did believe that these activist things were real and thinks he is the guy that you all pretend to be but aren't, who would in Nazi Germany have been the one guy like that who didn't do the fucking salute. And I'll tell you what, that guy's, oh girl, is in serious trouble if they ever try something when they go to this event. If they think this event is their like black power moment, you might actually ruin your whole life by doing that. And the worst thing is, if that happens, I do think that is the person where there will have to be a, a literal decision made by the Saudis of like, do we actually let someone get away with this? Like at our event, in our country, in our faces. And the problem I have is that is the person that this is designed for. Yeah. Because I think that sort of person actually might have like an international incident and have to go to prison or something or get barred from the country, minimum get barred from the country for life. Like I think that's the part that's most alarming because in general, I don't think anyone will do anything. Everyone will just go and play fucking video games. It won't be a problem. But it does worry me that like essentially what you would, t essentially we're in incentivizing with the way we tell history that you, you should be a hero if you do that yeah. but i'll tell you what if you do it mate you will absolutely ruin your life it'll be really sad some, for everyone yeah some idiot trying to recreate tank man or some stupid but yeah exactly but also as well to follow up on the thing you said uh earlier it's not just like it's reaching a point where holy shit i mean we might just have to get i mean we say hey go if you want don't if you want we might actually have to get rid of you because you're actually just not going to these events have fun You'd getting have to, a new yeah. team your yeah, career is exactly. toast if the circuit yep. turns into half the events are in saudi or more which could happen by the way in theory if you Absolutely. if you want to stand up and have your fucking tank man moment or whatever you, you goodbye to esports career you stop playing again because that's where all the fucking money is so yeah it's not even like you're causing issues in the immediacy of for your teammates or whatever you're unhirable by the way like if half the for example like Dennis Bergkamp used to never fly away to Champions League away games because of fear of flying, right? If half the fucking games were f involved him having to get yeah. on a plane, he wouldn't have a fucking job on a top team. Like, he was that good that, you know, it would still be worth on the bottom team. But, yeah, you just wouldn't have a team, right? Oh, so, true. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's it's uh, it's just very... Like, that. Uh, to me, that is... As you sort of outlined, that is the worst part of it, is like... It's such a fucking LARP that they're just pretending that the there are actually decisions to be made here. Once you as the org have made the decision, because again, that's different, right? If the org are like, we're not going to attend, everyone knows, okay, the players didn't attend because the org ve uh, vetoed it. No problem. Those players' careers long-term aren't in jeopardy, right? But if when they give the choice to the players and they know there's not a real decision and then a player has a chance to pull out or whatever and he does or doesn't, like his career could be in jeopardy. So yeah, I, I just think it's max level of cynicism. 
By the way, I'll give you one last little little gem as well. Here's another thing that just contextually, if you understand other contexts in esports, doesn't work for these orgs. So in Counter-Strike, in 2022, the winner of the IEM Rio Major, Rich, was a team called Outsiders. Now, you might not know who they are because there's never been a team called Outsiders. That was what they made Virtus Pro's players call themselves okay. when they were technically owned by the Russian team, Virtus Pro, right? And even though by the time they won that major, they'd actually already sold the org to an Armenian set of people. And so technically they'd fulfilled the requirements, you know, owned by some sort of oligarch or someone connected to Putin. So there's no sanctions, etc. The reason why I bring this up is that wasn't just a decision from ESL. That was like a collective decision from esports like collectively think about what they implied we can't even be associated with anyone with even like not even totally directly like indirect links to the government of a country doing things we disagree with right that implies every single esports org that attends this event co-signs everything that saudi arabia the government does that's literally the same logic. I didn't do that. I took the same logic elsewhere in another game and applied it. That is literally what you're implying. So if you're actually people like FlyQuest and Team Liquid, this tweet don't get it done, mate. This doesn't even touch the sides. What are you talking about? If we couldn't literally ever be in the same league as Carlos from G2 or Outsiders versus Pro in Counter-Strike, how the fuck can we go to an event with the Saudis, mate? That literally implies we are co-signing all their shit which I'm sure we're not, right? Surely that's what we're all pretending. It's actually why the saddest thing you notice I always try to bring up on these topics is, if you're going to be full of shit over here, why not just fucking, like, actually be smarter and don't do it the, the small precedent over here on the other thing? It's why I always bring up the Carlos thing. Because it's because we people went to the fucking hill to over a tweet, and then you can actually kill people, and it doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> that, that those skills will never make sense. It'll always be stupid. Like, I don't mind either way, by the way. You can do the other one. You can say, fuck Carlos to the ends of the earth, but then be, you have to be the guy who doesn't ever attend these events. That guy, by the way, in a weird way, I'd respect Rich. I can't handle the people who are in the middle. Because as I say, you th people think it's a joke. But, like, let's phrase it this way. What more would the Saudis have to do before it would be unacceptable to event? That, by the way, that's the question. The the equivalent of the live um, journalist should ask every fucking press conference in esports. They should keep asking it for real. Like, what would they have to do where there would be a line in the sand and we'd go right? This is unacceptable, though. Like, because as far as I can tell, I'm not joking. I don't think there's anything. I actually, I've tried to think this through because if people don't know, Saudi Arabia are like an ally of the United States, for example. So I actually think for real, there is no equivalent to like the Russian angle. Like, I, I, unless they essentially declared war, like either on the USA or maybe Israel or something. That's about, that's about the closest I can come to even thinking of what would ever make them change their mind. Because it's clearly nothing to do with what they do with their country, but that's clearly like, we're actually going out of our way to not address that, aren't we? You know, it's also as well, that's another interesting thing. We're supposed to believe that the event's fine and everyone's going to be safe and that this stuff doesn't happen that often, but not a single one of these tweets or posts ever addresses, well, what is the problem with the country, though? You know what's that? I said it at the beginning, Rich. What is the implication? The implication, if I read these tweets, only their tweets, is that I'm just going to a normal event. Well, then why are we offering people chances to opt out? What I'd actually genuinely, if I was an interviewer in a press conference, I would continually keep asking, but why would we need to offer an opt-out? But what would the bit? I would keep saying to them, but what's the difference when you go to an event in Germany and you go to this event? Why, when you go to the LEC, don't you say we'll allow any of our players to opt out? I would keep asking it over and over again because what the org cannot ever say out loud, by the way, is they put people in prison for tweets and potentially kill people at the border. Like they can't ever say the real things that they do. By the way, that in itself surely suggests it's in bad faith because yeah. if this is something you're pretending to address, then address it. But no one can. Like we're actually we we're, we're at some mad like emperor's got no clothes level stage already. By the way, <laughs> just in case anyone thought, because, you know, you'd be uh, forgiven for thinking that esports always do things and approach things from the stupidest possible angle, which is very true. The one example you reminded me of when you're talking about the whole Virtus Pro having to rename thing and, you know, separating them. Remember, guys, that's like separating themselves from people, oligarchs who have like direct links to Putin. Yep. The maddest one I've seen of this was actually when Wimbledon banned Russian players who had yeah, no connection to yep. Putin, literally based Dude, on the, the time fact I think that they that were... Russian guy, Medvedev, was like, yeah, Medvedev. Was like number one, number two. He was like yeah. one of the top players at the time. Yeah, he got one banned. of the favourites yeah. for Wimbledon was not allowed to play at Wimbledon simply because he was Russian. And by the way, if you took like yep. polls, especially at that time during the... the conflict as to how many Russians generally agreed with the invasion. Spoiler alert, it wasn't the majority, so the odds oh, no. this guy even supporting him was pretty slim. I believe like, he actually even is someone, Rich, who actually had said something publicly, yeah. like he was against the war or he's in favour of peace, which by the way I think is even illegal in Russia, so like he'd actually gone like as far as he could go pretty much, yeah. Yeah, that is absolutely it's wild, amazing. isn't it? Well, in the Olympics they have that, right? That was Well, that was the doping thing as well, but since the Ukraine stuff has happened, there's been a lot of pressure to stop. Oh, for sure, yeah. Uh, I know I follow the hockey like the Russians. I don't think we're invited to the um, 
World like Cup or something like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so, some national tournament, right? There is some kind of there is still some kind of backlash. I think part of the potentially, I guess, um, people listening might be like, "Well, what the chance? No one's going to go over to Saudi Arabia and do that kind of like black power moment." There was literally a Counter Strike tournament, right, that just passed a few months back, where someone rushed the stage broke the trophy it's the major the protest yeah yeah the major yep. the g2s um and well the skin the sponsor G2s, or whatever it was exactly. like that. yeah skin sponsor Some casino gambling, they worked with i think yeah 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 it's true. Like, if yep. <laughs> you know people are willing to people will do it <laughs> they'll do it and the thing is because they're doing it in i don't know where it was called i think yeah, I don't know. No, that was in um, Copenhagen. That was in Denmark. Yeah. Right. So you're doing it in Denmark where, you know, the police isn't going to come and pretty good. Yeah. yeah. The you, the internet is a sheltered place. So well, of course. You would think someone see. Yeah, I don't know, man. Well, it here's the real irony, Foxdrop, is if some Westerner did do this in Saudi Arabia, what would happen is as they were being tackled to the ground and carried off, they would scream out loud, human rights, human rights. It's like the irony is, yeah, that's actually the whole problem here. Like, if you yeah. actually understood what the human rights situation you'd have never put yourself in that situation and done this. Because, again, you only shout human rights, human rights when you think you're in a Western liberal democracy where it's like a movie and people have to listen to you and help you. Hey, what's going on with that guy? Like, if you actually understand how totalitarian regimes work, everyone just quietly looks at their feet and fucking looks away while you get carried out the room and goes, I don't think I want to join him. And they just put, oh, continue with the tournament. Yes, no, it's all <laughs> applaud. Like, they, I, I agree. I think people are so deluded about that. Like, But you can tell some people think they're in the movie of their own life. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, uh, we're only halfway through. Fantastic, Sal. I've had a lot to talk about today. We've got two more topics. Let's, uh, let's go to the next one here. We're, we're moving from Saudi Arabia to the great land well, of... Actually, I've got a question green. for you, Foxtrop. Okay. Because here's mind. one thing I, about that topic I'll bring up, this last thing to say is this, mm -hmm. right? One thing I find really weird, it's that term conspicuous. Right? You know the term in English, conspicuous by its absence. Like, essentially, yeah. what's weird is that you would expect to see this thing, but it's not there at all. It's completely gone. Here's the weirdest thing of all time. How come there is no actual real pushback against any of this topic? Like, here's the weirdest one of all. Dude, you'd think even anonymously. Like, I tell you what, you know people make fun when me and Richard win, like, Journalist of the Year and stuff? Well, I'll tell you what, people like Jacob Wolf. All you have to do to win your Pulitzer, dickhead, is go and interview off the record a load of famous players who are gay, transgender, and non-binary and have them say to you that they feel unsafe about this event and that they wish they could opt out, but they can't for cause of it. If you did that story, by the way, unironically, un that is one of, like, the top five stories in the history of esports, you would be hailed as, like... Like fucking speaking truth to power, all those things journalists like LARP what they want. It doesn't exist. Not only is no one doing that, nobody even wants to do that or thinks to do that, mate. Like the weirdest thing of all for me, for real, is this. When I think of some of the people who are friends of mine, who people have tried to like end their whole careers over like a tweet where they're like, oh, I used to slur or a rude word. Mm -hmm. And it's like, bro. There's not even, like, you haven't even all got a group, like some sort of a union where you all get together and say, like, this is unacceptable to have events. Like, that's not even, the, that's not even a conversation. It's not like the convo even happens, then it should, it doesn't even start. That's the part I'm actually really shocked about this topic. Like, believe it or not, Rich, people think I'm a very cynical person. And I thought there'd be, like, some groups that use this as, like, their angle, you know, this would be the anti-grift, like, well, yeah, don't hold events there, only hold them in countries that, like, we approve. You could have some whole angle, like, this could even be your own little grift, like, you know, like, we, we give the approval for, like, the US in Denmark or whatever, you know, there's none of that. Like everyone to a man is just sort of like, no comment. <laughs> it's like no one, no one has an opinion. It's wild. There's not even any. By the way, dude, here's I'll tell you who the frauds are. Motherfuckers like Sonic Fox. Bro, you loved flexing all that fucking shit about your sexuality every time you won an award. And you loved going on there. Hey, Republicans hate me. What do Saudis think of you, mate? Mm -hmm. There's my question. What do Saudis think of you? And would you attend an event there? And if you wouldn't, by the way, fucking speak up. If you're a hero, there's the mic. Go and be a hero. As far as I can tell, these people are only willing to be a hero when they know it's not actually any stakes to be a hero. Like, it's only when they know you can't get killed. You can't get... Like, the real joke of when Sonic Fox did that is he knows that Republicans don't control fucking esports and wouldn't end his career and all of his sponsors gone tomorrow and then he has no one he can play. He actually knew that saying that was an incredibly safe opinion in the same way as back in the day, people like John Cleese used to be like, haha, silly old conservatives, but then now he'd like be like, and what about well, shit, I can't make fun of any of these people. Ah, oh, shit, no. 
Oh, well, end of comedy, I guess. Like, it's the same shit, mate. It's like you were a hero and a big man when you, there was no fucking danger and the stakes were just like everyone sort of agrees with you. But when there's actually real stakes, like, because here's the thing. I, I hope people understand. If I myself actually was gay, I would be the one speaking out against this. I would make the whole fucking association of get all the people behind the scenes. and I'd, I would do some of the things Richard does, but 10 times more. I'd pay for like sky writing, like at the country, at the edge of Saudi Arabia. So like, what about the gays? Or so I'd do all that shit. But by the way, why is no one doing any of that? I'm being serious. Why is there not a single person with money or power who has it just has a voice against this? There's not anyone in esports, as far as I can tell. There's not even anyone fucking retired. Why is there not some legendary retired women come out and do this? You know, like some fucking one who's like a top couch striker. There's no one. No one. No one gives a monkeys about actually fucking speaking out against this bit. We're just to a man decided either we're going to say nothing or agree. I just find that the craziest part. I really thought there'd be some pushback. It's not just it's the esports, though, is it? It's like with the World Cup in Qatar. Like, there was, there was... There was loads. Think about all the players even saying shit, yeah. But they still did it. <laughs> they did, the but at least I can... Here's the thing. Even though they ended up being hypocrites, I at least appreciated, like, the attempt. You know, when they all claimed they were going to wear that pin and stuff? Yeah, we haven't... Yeah, even, we don't even have the equivalent of that, mate. We don't even get the... We don't even sure. get the fake to, like, spike sure. out and then sell out. They just sell out to begin with. It's got to just be money, surely. <laughs> it always comes down to money. But I, like you say, even people who don't really have stakes in the money... Like a retired person. By the way, wouldn't agree with them. Ironically, wouldn't like frost scoring. This is your moment, love. You could actually be a hero right now. If you actually came out now, if you don't ever plan on working in Saudi Arabia or with like Riot, like this is actually the, probably the best moment ever for you to speak out. By the way, you'd get loads of press as well. Think about all the people around the world who'd want to contact you. Hasn't she left esports? To... I don't know. I have no idea. She probably she deleted Twitter, so she doesn't exist to me anymore. It turned out <laughs> actually Twitter is just life because soon she deleted that. I'll say our mind in it, sadly. Please come back, please. <laughs> <laughs> I actually do miss people like that. No, same, on. same. I, I, so it anything else for the... Uh, nah, it's the, all good. It's all well up stuff. We move on to... Yes, the rolling green hills of Great Britain. Um, yes, insomnia. For any of you guys watching, don't know what insomnia is. It's... Yes, if you have been follow, if you don't follow Shocks on Instagram as well, you might not know. But it's basically this version of Insomnia is is, is the biggest. By the way, that's actually fire. The joke he did there. Keep going. Keep, that that was fan. actually very good. Yeah, fair fan. play, fair play. You killed that one. Good one. Just a little one. Just a little flood out of there. And yeah, big <laughs> land event in the UK. The uh, the company that has uh, is in control of it that was uh, you know organising and suffers far from voluntary liquidation. Uh, the event itself has has been has been seeing its numbers dip. I mean, I'd say even before COVID, to be honest, but especially since COVID, these land big land events really uh, aren't quite as big. Uh, and the future of the uh, of the land event itself, like I said, again, the biggest land event in the UK is uh, is up in the air. My question to you guys isn't necessarily about insomnia specifically, um, but just about the UK and esports as a whole. Obviously, all of us here are from the UK. Um, but we kind of suck at esports. If you look at other, um, you know, other regions, uh, other, I don't know what, yeah, uh, just people, the, the gamers in, let's say, you know, you've got the LFL, LVP, this is all League of Legends, right, but, of course, but still, like, they're, they're rabid fan bases. Oh, for sure, you know, yeah. Absolutely rabid fan bases. You've got um, some good examples you put here, Rich, as well, like Brazil, huge. These, you know, like the South American League, like the LAS, I think it is, is sometimes peaks more than fucking lcs at this point it's crazy turkey as well in, in itself yeah. back in the day was the biggest region like just these these uh small regions supporting their own leagues has been crazy and, th and then you see that come through to the top level when you look at the lec and you look at the nationalities of the players that come from there with a new, new wave of french players coming through you got some really good spanish players in the league that kind of thing it's all fostered because you know the local region the local scenes uh, are big they're prestigious and people you know uh, gamers see that young gamers see that like i want to be like that i want to do that they come up through the system they become big big players we don't really have that in the uk right the biggest uk for league of legends at least again the biggest uh, uk league of legends path to pro so to speak is the nlc which isn't even its own UK league. Mm -hmm. It's joint with the Nordics. We don't have our own league anymore, right? Because it wasn't a thing. We also got demoted recently from a proper region to whatever the hell we are now. Um, and when you look at the amount of British players that are in the uh, the LEC or the top flight of esports, it's not that high, considering at least relative to the uh, population. Oh, 
Oh. And remember, dude, every single team in LEC speaks English. Like, that's that's yeah. actually the biggest dunk on us as a country. It's like, bro, it's literally, uh, people might make fun of broken English. They're all getting fucking out jobs with broken English. And you speak English from day one, motherfucker. Like, mm. you have the craziest advantage over them ever. If you can't if you can't leverage that, you probably do suck compared to them. Like, they probably are better, let's be real. And this is it. The UK, the UK just does not produce uh, esports. Pretty much, basically, unless it's casting talent or talent in general, because then we, we we're not too bad at that. Um, but yeah, why why is that? Why does the UK suck so much at this? Uh, I started with you throwing before, so uh, Rich, why do you think the UK is just not so good at this stuff? By the way, the casting talent thing is obviously something we've mentioned before. There is a lot of casting talent from the UK. I do suspect, based on like all these other factors that we might bring up or, me or mention or whatever, is purely because we speak english as our native language yeah. like so yeah sound, you, yeah, exactly. yeah exactly your yeah. your your cadence and like the the ways in yeah. which you can make yourself more entertaining are going to be way more sort of naturalistic than someone who's french or whatever but even if they're fluent in english like just doesn't tend to translate as well right um so yeah i well you mentioned before like for people who've even heard of insomnia the insomnia they probably heard of isn't like what i sort of grew up with it's now you know or was like a fucking was like minecraft slash candy crush level mm. uh sort of a uh, gaming event almost like aldi dream hack you know but without like any tournaments <laughs> like whatsoever yeah. and when i say dream hack i don't mean you know like the individual events i mean like if you actually go to Jonko Ping or whatever the fuck it's called and uh, everyone's sweating their dicks off in that massive hall with their PCs or whatever playing casual games like that is kind of what Insomnia became but Insomnia used to be a relatively serious business esports tournament back in the game in fact I played at Insomnia in various events and sort of going back way into like the early i30s maybe even the i20s I'm not really sure um, back in the day I think they were like 75 now or something but when I played as well, I was playing on Call of Duty. There were also Counter-Strike tournaments or whatever. There were hundreds of teams at this event. Like, you wouldn't even make an esports tournament with brackets like that anymore. It was, like, split into groups of, like, eight to ten teams. And, like, like some of the CS tournaments had, like, 150 teams. Same with the Call of Duty tournaments. Like, it was actually a big deal. There wasn't, like, loads of prize money or whatever. But, again, there just wasn't that much money in esports back then at all. But you still had, like, all the best Scandi players coming over. Um, and even then, like in Call of Duty, we had quite a lot of uh, UK players. In CS Source, there were quite a lot of sort of UK players. But generally, we, for whatever reason, have not had good players and a strong fan interest. And I think the reason being primarily is simply a cultural thing. And as sad as this sounds, I think it's basically a too cool for school thing. Uh, mm. I think that we see gaming in this country as sort of a purely social thing. And I don't mean, oh, I play League of Legends with friends. We play Aero. I don't mean like that. I mean, like, FIFA and Call of Duty for me were like fucking drinking games. Like, at university or whatever. It's like, if you had an Xbox, you'd already get like a little bit of an eye raise. And it's like, oh, you guys are playing FIFA. Okay, that's, that's acceptable and cool. And then your mates like pull up and pull out some fucking beers or whatever. Like, it was very much like, oh, you're, you would never call yourself a gamer that is automatically oh my god this guy lives in his parents basement never sees the light of day i even remember a guy coming this must have been like 2004 2005 someone coming into school and talking and not like some sort of ostracized nerd or something like you know a stereotypical in with the cool crowd uh, kid or whatever and he made the fatal error of revealing by accident in a conversation that he played world of warcraft and I'm not joking, that guy's life was never the same at school, like never the same. Whereas again, if you went to Sweden or something like that at a similar time, I think that would probably be a topic of, you know, social bonding or whatever, the fact that they play these games. So I do think by far and away, the biggest reason is cultural. And by the way, for anyone who says like, oh, but what do you mean? Like, uh, there have been events at like the O2 before and they do, in fact, Worlds is going to be at Wembley Arena or whatever, blah, blah. Mate, those are not going to be predominantly UK fans attending. There will be some just because, one, the event is so big that the casual fans are going to attend anyway or whatever. But that will generally be like, yeah, that will be international fans in the same way that, um, in fact, I went to the, the, the Challenger Series finals at Wembley Arena in like 2015 or something like that. 
and mate the amount of asians and like just oh, people gosh. from other european it was mm. absolutely huge so yeah it's it, i think it is just basically a cultural thing um and i don't really know how you fix that i don't really know i think in time probably it will shift gradually just because as an industry it's you know more normalized i suppose but it's already massive i don't know i don't know i just i i don't really necessarily see a path to um getting on par with like your polands and your brazils and stuff like that i think it, it is just a cultural thing yeah i think that's fair and i usually i would just swap straight to you here Tom, but i have a bit of a like, on, unique perspective too because i you know work on a lot of these english broadcasts and i i think cultural is a big one because if, if you're not aware as well if you're not from the uk like the biggest uh games that people play over here um competitive games at least you know you're talking fifa cod's probably not as big now as it it's as it was be up there still a bit though, yeah right? fifa cod um I assume Fortnite, or Apex Legends, or something. It's going to be your exactly. console games mainly. Right? Um, to be yeah. fair, I actually, uh, you know, I do a lot of work at um, the. <laughs> you're gonna, yeah, you'll probably laugh at this story, but I'll say it anyway. The, there's a place called the College of Esports in London. Okay. And I help do lecture there. Now it's not one of those colleges that gives out degrees in esports. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. They give out they give out normal normal degrees, okay. business degrees, uh, digital media degrees, journalism degrees, whatever. It's just like when you do your uh, assignments whatever you won't be like oh look at look at events management for example let's see how the world cup was organized you'd be let's see how worlds was organized nice. that kind okay. of thing it's mostly just like a networking thing to help people get um you know their they work with people in the industry that that kind of thing so and all the kids there are playing you know maybe like f1 or something but like fifa apex right. these kind of games right no one plays like the league of legends and, and then that kind of thing i think league of legends is as rich says just on call when i was going to school as well i remember being you talked about world of warcraft rich in your story i was like there's i played well when i was that age i was like there's no fucking way i'm i would ever admit to this thing when i got my first girlfriend i used to lie to her not great but i used to lie to her about what i was doing saying i was out with friends all the time i was playing counter strike <laughs> and i was like i can't tell her i'm a gamer because she'll dump me so I'm just well, always it's like to me isn't it where like when it would be for things like league people would do that joke where the, when the mom comes in you're like i'm just watching porn like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what, the reason that joke works is because in literally. a way it's more shameful than even porn now it's yeah true. honestly it's not true that's literally how it is uh, yeah, so there is there is a cultural thing, but there's something as well which I think is quite important when it comes to um, specific, specifically League of Legends too, and why I believe like it's difficult for these kind of like the the regional uh, broadcasts to succeed. So in our case, you know, like the just like a UK scene for League of Legends, and I w I would say this applies to other esports as well. Is that the your your audience is English speaking, so English, right? But the your um your broadcast isn't even the biggest English speaking broadcast because that will always be LEC or or, or LCS or, or whatever the equivalent would be in in other esports, right? So your your competition, let's say if you're in France, what's the biggest French speaking broadcast? Well, it's the French league or the French rebroadcast of an English speaking broadcast. So French people latch onto the French speaking broadcast. Right. Same for Germans, same for Turkish people, the, the, yes. the Portuguese, that kind of thing. Whereas if you're an English speaker and you want to watch an English broadcast, you watch the LEC. Just the main one. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. You watch the yeah. main one. And so it means the competition that way. If you're at the LFL, it's watch true. your competition. Not, you know, yes. you are the, uh, the highest thing. Your competition, if you're the, the, the NLC or Forest Champions or whatever the fuck it was in the past, is the LEC, <laughs> and that's a lot harder to compete with. So, at least from that perspective, it's always made it difficult to um, to really compete. And to then, when when, you, when your broadcast itself isn't as prestigious, like I guess, or like as, as big, um, or has that competition, it's really hard to find that audience. You know, and it, without the audience, you can't grow as a broadcast, and this and that, and blah, blah blah blah. You know, so from from my opinion, my perspective. That's kind of where I where I land with, with that kind of thing with the UK as well. What are your thoughts, Thorin? What do you think about the UK and, and esports and its kind of shortcomings? 
I do agree, by the way, on some of the points you made. I think you've made some very good cultural ones. Like, I actually have always said the same thing. The difference is, I used to spin it the other way. And the joke I would always make with Monty on so many insight was, mate, at this point in time, if you're that Western broadcast, which isn't called the Western broadcast, is it? It's just the English language broadcast. You may as well just make it the Western broadcast at this point in time. Like, your whole broadcast is so insanely biased to trying to find a way that Team Liquid G2 and Fnatic were going to have a chance at that MSI. Like, so at that point in time, you may as well actually just commit and be the Western Western broadcast because at least you would like you're saying serve a purpose of like dictating to a hardcore fan base because it's true there is no UK equivalent like I'll give you a funny version of what this would be like but this is what you would actually want which is back in the day when I went to Korea like one of the first times in like I think it was like 2010 or something right I went there and already in bars you'd sometimes see them watching actual like football sometimes it would be uh, Korean football sometimes it would be Premier League and the joke was I once watched them watch I think the this is like when fucking... I think it was when that guy, Jason Park, played for Man United, right? And when he was playing a game, well, obviously, he's the only Korean player, even in the game, in this Premier League game, right? But the way they commentated the game, for real, remember, I don't understand Korean, would be like, Jason Park, Jason Park, and the joke was, they would actually be commentating in English, the equivalent of like, and that guy who got the pass from Jason Park then scores, like, and they would like just make a way that there, because they knew 90% of the people watching their broadcast just cared about the Jason Park guy because he was Korean. So they found a way, even though towards it sounded shit, to make everything about that guy and how he was having an impact. Right? Unironically, that is what all these other broadcasts are doing. And it's actually how you engender, look what I despise in terms of fan culture, but it is like super nationalistic fan culture. So like, unironically, you should have had that all these years. Like, for real, you should actually have had, like, for real, when fucking like misfits was in a final there should have been like a like a fucking fan club in the uk that were like right we're all going to watch alfari and max in the final at the like you know audience cinema chain and if you come down on mondays there's gonna be like 200 people and buy merch to support the club like that is what every other major country you're talking about france spain they all have that we don't have that so i do think already that's a bad thing but i do think it actually ties into bigger issues like first of all i also think rich made a very shrewd point there which is don't ever get tricked by the odd massive event like a world's or a cs made that's there because one if an, I, I had to learn this the hard way in Counter-Strike which is it's why American events now only get one or two events a year now because they learned if you actually keep going every month even the same fan doesn't come back next month he, he might be able to get his dad to take him one time a year and so you better make it like Worlds or the Major and you better sort of like let him like build up to it and the idea is that's not like going to a football ground every week they wouldn't go every week they're going to go one time so already you can't make it like wow it's a really burgeoning scene it's like no it's the other way around you can make them have one one day they all agreed to turn up and they might turn up for that one. And then secondly, even those fan bases, I agree. In the modern day, those aren't all native fans. Like for things like the major worlds, everyone travels. If you like basically if you're European, you're gonna go there. I mean, I give you two examples. One for League of Legends is the reason why it doesn't make any sense to be like, but look at this League of Legends crowd, right? I think like 10 plus years ago, I went to visit a friend of mine in Newcastle, and I was like, bloody hell, there's a lot of Chinese people in Newcastle. And he said, Well, yeah, there's like almost everyone at the fucking uni is like a Chinese student, like they've all come to the UK universities so already a game like league's gonna have loads of foreign fans i'll give you another good one if anyone remembers one of the first gfinity events in counter-strike global offensive was the one won by virtus pro in like 2014 it was one of my first events like when i was doing csgo events right the joke is the reason it had a huge crowd unironically rich it's because Virtus Pro is Polish and there was loads of Polish expats who worked in the UK at the time. So like the joke I made at the time, even to Richard, but it was true, it was like, man, it's like a home crowd for them. Like yeah. Taz and people going up to the ground, they're all speaking in Polish to him. Like it was all, it wasn't fucking, even though remember, this is this was in like the copper box or whatever. It wasn't people from fucking Fulham and London. Like there was barely any UK fans there. Like it was just all, it was like the joke is, it was like French fans for Titan and then like, I don't know, some Danish ones for this one and then loads of ones for that. So already you've got that angle. And then to me, I. I think culture's everything here. Like, back in the day, there used to be a lot of logistical reasons you could give. Like, our internet was famously super yeah. scuffed and you wouldn't be as good. Or, famously, the worst one for both DSR and cable was even if your internet was good in theory, if everyone on your road used it and downloaded on those fucking P2P files, then it tanked the fucking internet and you all got that nightmare, like, you know, 999 ping and you couldn't fucking play and it wrecked you. So that already did used to put people off, like, gaming culture in a way that you didn't get in, like, Sweden or whatever. But... And also the other one for me was back in the day, the internet was notoriously bad at unis because they used to actually block the gaming ports. So famously, if you turned 18, unless you were like willing to give up your whole life, you had to just give up your career and just say, right, fuck it. Right. Even though I was like a prodigy in Counter-Strike, I'm not playing Counter-Strike. 
I'm going to uni for four years now. But if you want to go on the cultural angle, I do think that is massive because I think Rich has nailed it. If you had to tell me what is the number one reason that determines why UK, especially in Counter-Strike, a game that we actually have like quite a long heritage in, why don't we have that many good Counter-Strike players? Because somehow this one thing has never left British culture, which is the idea that, as you said, specifically nerdy esports games are not cool. Like, gaming is cool. You nailed it there because Rich knows this. In the era of when gaming popped off, the real console that made the game pop off was not Nintendo. It was the PlayStation. And you know this, the whole thing of the PlayStation, it's aged terribly now because this type of person is treated like an actual Nazi now, was lad culture. It was all about the way that they got all these sales was not convincing people like me, a nerd who does play Mario, that, like, Tomb Raider is good. No, no, what you did is the reason the game was Tomb Raider, a woman with fucking tits and nice ass running around, or like wipe out where you're doing some futuristic racing or FIFA. It's because this is all to appeal to the fucking lads. Like Rich is saying, they're going to play the PlayStation before they go out to the fucking beers on the night out on Tekken or something. Like they're not the guys going, oh, fucking hell, I've just got Final Fantasy Tactics here. I'm like level 17. Like they, they don't even know about that. They never play those games. So unfortunately, people conflated the idea that all these people were gamers. And so if we have all these gamers, and, so, and by the way, our industry for gaming is incredible in the UK, like the amount of money being made. But as you notice, what relevance does the guy who literally is like a 27 year old chav playing fucking FIFA with his mate what does he have to do with us having like NLC for example like he doesn't even impinge like he's not even in the target demographic we can't even get that guy to come so I do think sadly the number one thing that pro players always said in games like Counter Strike was they themselves the actual pro themselves would use this angle against the other pros they'd be like ah oh, you fucking try hard Yo, mm. look, there's barely any money at the line and you're fucking no life and all night long. We're just fucking around playing, you know, some scrims and that. And then we're your fucking... Like, they actually... That's the weirdest thing. That's how you know we can't beat this mentality. Because it's one thing if the popular kid who, like I say, plays the PlayStation, who wouldn't come to the event says, Darren, you're a nerd. The other guy who's also playing me in my peer group in the league, in this game, and putting like 80% of his life in the game, he can't be turning to me and going, you're a bit of a fucking loser with no girlfriend. Like... Bro, he's supposed to be in on this. Like, think about the analogy you gave of, like, World of Warcraft. People who play World of Warcraft and Dungeons and & Dragons don't do that to each other. They, it's, it's the other way around, if anything. The guy who plays World of Warcraft reveres the guy who's, like, level whatever it is at the top and, like, plays at a pro level and has all amazing arena clips. The guy who plays fucking, like, some nerdy d and They worship some fucking super nerds. So I do think in the UK, somehow, we just made it so that eternally to be this type of gamer, not like a generalized game, you can do that, but to be this type of super hardcore game you are basically a fucking guy wearing an anorak train spotting. That is absolutely what we have created as a culture. And so as a result, it isn't something people aspire to do. It's not something that, like young people, that's why the joke is, the closest we probably did come in the last few years to any sort of interest was things like Fortnite, where just it was just a That was like, I always say this, Fortnite was like Pogs, but just computer version. Like it was just a trend that every kid played for two or three years. Now here's what you might not realize, guys. That's what these esports nerd games are like in the other countries. If you go to Korea, famously, I once talked to a guy who was like a taxi driver, knew nothing about esports. He didn't know who Faker is or any of these people, but he knew who Boxer was. And I said to him, like, but how do you know who Boxer is, but you don't know who, like, Faker is, for example, or even Flash? And he said, oh, because I never followed it as a game. He said, just, he said, everyone used to play it when they were 12, and Boxer was the most famous one. So I know Boxer, and I knew the game because I played it when I was 12. But he made it just sound like it's like a rite of passage. So to me, the same with Sweden in Counter-Strike. Yeah. People would actually argue part of why Sweden's not that good at Counter-Strike because they don't have that culture anymore. They used to really have a thing where if you went to the cafe, like Inferno Online, where, like, NIP or SK Gaming, the best Swedish team was playing back in the day, unironically, there were actually kids outside their playing room that had like window like see through perspex like actually doing some like fucking like a Christmas carol shit of like face on the window looking in the god I wish that was me inside there playing there were heating and that or whatever the fuck it was back then you know like that was real people would actually do that I've heard now and this is the fucking black pill because it's if it's happening in Sweden by the way we haven't got a chance to turn it around I've heard now if you go to like Inferno Online they don't even play Counter Strike on the PCs there everyone is playing like Apex Legends <laughs> Fortnite FIFA like even then it's turned and so unfortunately, I do feel like we were sort of like yo yours or fucking Pokemon cards or Pogs. Like, we, there was a time where it was a little bit cool, but in general, it has been very uncool. Because I agree, in the modern day, like, even like, here's the obvious example 
in the modern day, if you brought someone onto a massive TV show in, in Korea and he was faker and you said you just won the world championship, they'd treat it really seriously. If you brought, pick whoever you want, the best UK esports player, probably be someone in fucking Cardiff or Benji Fishy or someone in Valorant, I don't know. If you brought that guy onto Graham Norton, they would ridicule him yeah. the whole time. Yeah. They'd even treat him like he's actually like a fucking incel loser bitch who's like, they'd actually for real, like, it'd be like the SWAT in school, like that. And by the way, I'm not blaming them. That is sort of the vibe we all have. But, but as a result, who the fuck's going to dream of being that guy and put their whole life into it? So it is sad. It's a sad I've, I've, uh, I've said this before, but dive this back into insomnia as well. Like when we used to play events there, obviously you had like usually, because there's so many teams as well, it was sort of like a group stage, whatever. Sure. And you're not all playing at the same time because obviously just the speed of games, like th this for people, and you were... Uh, fans of gaming or whatever like every game isn't a stage game when you're playing at a fucking insomnia oh. event or 150 teams and p teams would come up to you when you like while you're playing like an official game like while you're playing an official game they just come up to where your pcs are i'm like boys where are your beers it's groups are you fucking pussies like what are you doing like you're not gonna get drunk in groups like come on oh you really think you couldn't get through this group unless you're sober like fucking hell guys that is pathetic and they would unironically like ridicule okay. you even though this is technically connected i'll use every chance i can to ever tell this anecdote one of the best stories ever was what ben woodward told me he used to be the manager of four kings especially when they were in couch strike and stuff back in the day that back in the day they had an event fox drop where it was like an actual like land qualifier for like a cpl or something but it was at one of those trade shows and as Maggie Capra the best UK player was playing an actual qualifier match he was like you know like fucking aimed on the corner or something someone like tapped him on his shoulder like that like some random person from the crowd. <laughs> then when he turned around he was like yeah what he goes like yeah what the guy goes can I have a go? <laughs> he didn't even understand it was a tournament. He thought it was like, you know, like a booth and he would just try it out a yeah. new game. So, and man, get Capra for like to stop me. I'm fucking playing in a fucking match right now. Shut up. I love it. I fucking love it. That's, imagine that tap. That tap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's too good. It's too good. It was quality. Probably thought it was a, an really. admin or something. No, it's it's hilarious. I know. I know. Just a random, just a random guy wanted to play. Fantastic. We had, by the way, we had, we played in tournaments that were so scuffed that we unironically played against someone who was just rage botting, like people who oh. complain about like you know matchmaking now and like, oh, this happened at a LAN the guy was rage botting we went over to the guy because obviously you know it's just a big open fucking hall and we're like uh what are you doing get banned see you later kid whatever and he's like oh no didn't you see they kind of fucked up the copy paste on the rules and actually you can't uh, request my demo like in the group stage of this tournament and we went it up sounds... to the we went up to the guy i'm not going to say his name actually because it's happening i think he's still in esports and he actually has a role at uh uh, whatever a to a org that you may all have heard probably of. works in but, safety uh, at the esports world cup now so <laughs> yeah, player safety yeah. but we we're like we we're like uh yeah so obviously you guys made a mistake on the rule set but you know he's rage botting i can show you from my pov or any pov or just get his fucking demo and he's like oh shit did we actually not put it in the rules like yeah no apparently not he's like ah fuck then it's just it's just fucked isn't it and it was just and he said it like that as well like, ah, it's just fucked isn't it and i was like what do you mean He's like, well, yeah, no, you guys are out. Like, uh, well, sound, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> that, that was just like but UK yeah. esports in a nutshell. But yeah, if you didn't play the group stage drunk, you're a pussy. And that is, I think, quite a nice sort of summary of UK culture. Mm. Oh, by the way, also one last thing I would tap on as well. But it's like, you know how, I mean, even you might have seen, like, if you look at the esports World Cup thing, you're like, what the fuck is that random mobile game that's got like a million pound prize pool? And then you look into it and it's like, turns out that 2 billion people in fucking Indonesia or something play it or whatever. Yeah. I do also think that we have a culture, like our gaming culture. If you go up to a guy in the street and you say, are you a gamer? First of all, they'll probably be like, what do you mean? But then when you clarify, be like, oh yeah, I play fucking, I don't know, like play Resident Evil once on my Xbox. Like our culture is very much, or gaming culture is very much like console based, or at least it was mm. like, when we like all the stereotypical esports that we think of are pc games right but like the vast majority of people who would class themselves as quote-unquote gamers in like the 2000s were playing console they didn't they probably don't even have pcs like that's the thing we we take it for granted that everyone now has a pc in their house most of these people probably don't even have pcs now they'll have a work laptop which they might have fucking minesweeper in or some shit and then they'll have an xbox or a playstation like they probably won't even have a pc by the way i've got a good act thought like that for you rich this is just a buy i won't say who but a quite legendary player from esports did one of those reflections interviews with me but it's one of those ones where they haven't been in esports for years and when they did it right this is mental at the beginning i was using something like you know fucking zoom or something it's like the thing to record things 
through. And I tell the guy, right, I go, can you just put your volume up a bit? You know, because I can't, on that one, I can't do it on my end. They have to do it. And he goes, no, I can't. And I go, what do you mean? And he goes, it's a work laptop, and they've told me I'm not allowed to change anything on it. And I went, no, no, they just mean, like, don't like install. And he goes, no, they've told me I'm not allowed to change. And so he just wouldn't even put the volume up. It's like, I'm not looking at you, Dafcon, is it? Like, <laughs> I love that the idea is following the instructions too closely, you know. Like, what a world. Let's get on to it. talking. Like, we're killing it on this show right now. There's only fucking UK people here. Exactly. This is what I said, talent-wise. Yeah. I mean, obviously the most talented. It's all the rest of them slacking. We're killing it. We're, we're fucking legends of the game. We are. We are. They need to bring it up to our standards here. We set a very high bar here on side. In fact, Thorin might actually have peaked more than any pro player, as we've all heard his anecdote about when he had to deputise in that Counter-Strike game. That's probably the closest oh, yeah, to glory story, any yeah. UK player ever got to anyway. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> almost. Almost. Speaking of land events, let's move on to our last topic of the day. Uh, it was the um, Super Smash Bros. that was happening. Hungry Box, you guys probably heard of one of the you know, very decorated uh, Super Smash Bros. player. Um, he was playing at his, uh, the Get On My Level tournament. Quite an interesting name, can I just say, before we actually get into it. Get On My Level, very interesting. That is definitely outsider money meets <laughs> uh, some fucking grifter <laughs> like Marty from Splice. <laughs> and they but just contrive. I'll tell you, the worst one I heard, yeah, was in, in Warcraft 3, there's a, um, a strategy called forcing, which is where you're basically just like, it's like rushing, basically, that kind of thing. Power rush and, or something. Yeah, that kind of thing early take these kind of whatever and there was a community ran or like streamer ran whatever ran tournament um called the don't force me bro tournament so there's that which i think is exceptionally questionably named um makes sense in a warcraft context but even so someone should have said something Anyway, get on my level tournament. Um, Hungrybox player, he reverse swept his opponent, was very hyped about it, and in doing so, his celebration picked up his chair and smashed it into the ground. And again, this it wasn't a violent act, it was his celebration and how he uh, demonstrated his elation at the reverse sweep. The tournament organizer tweeted out the moment like, wow, look at this. It's cool. Hungry Boxes does it. He reverse sweeps, seemingly endorsing what happened. But a lot of the fans actually felt that the reaction uh, was in bad faith or a bad look for the community, uh, which has brought up the question of over celebrating and perhaps tact in doing so. Gracious in victory or something. Humble in victory and gracious in defeat. So, what do you guys think? Is there such a thing as over-celebrating? What do you think about this specific incident here with Hungry Box as well? Dorian, tell me your thoughts. I will say I am not at all associated with the fighting game community. And the joke is, unless I remember, it's called, I even call them beat-em-ups, and I don't give a flying <laughs> fuck, because that's British for you right there. That is as British up. as it comes. Uh, no, they were like to call them fighting games for whatever reason, because Britain beat them like the UK colloquial way of saying it in it so already i'm not really from their scene anyway but there's like a couple of things to this so one is in just in terms of the celebration i have to say i was so underwhelmed when i saw the video of this right two things that are obvious one right rich has linked like a dessert or write-up of this right what's mad is it does actually if you click on one of the tweets have embedded the video of him doing the celebration but you never know that from the actual news post because it's so badly written like just as a quick obvious thing for people with journalists little 101 tip for you Put the fucking thing the story's about in the story. Like, you probably saw this, Rich. There was all those people did those news posts about Smuya slaying Slava Ukraina, right? And didn't even put the screenshot of him saying it in the post. Like, well, then what are you reporting on? So, already, that's a bit weird. But if you look, if you go and look, you can see there's a video where they show the guy doing it. I was so underwhelmed because when this said, like, he smashed a chair, I was thinking it was going to be like he fucking, like, you know, smashed it off like a fucking stanchion or something, <laughs> or he threw it in the crowd, or like, yeah, he had like a scuffle with someone. 
all the guy does is, right, first of all, if you know these pop-offs, they give him quite a bit of space to sort of go harm. And so, like, it's almost like a WWE thing, isn't it, right? And in the space he has, he doesn't come even vaguely close to injuring anyone. He doesn't even injure the chair. It's like a really sturdy, like, ballroom chair, people don't know. And he's just banging it on, like, essentially what looks like just like a wooden stage or something. Even then, he bangs it once, just out of passion. And the second time, even the second time, he thinks twice, if you watch this clip, Not and sort of goes yeah. like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do it. So so it's like, first of all, it's already the biggest like storm in a teacup I've even seen. And then as far as I can tell, the main area people are mad about doesn't even make sense because it's not about Hungry Box doing it. Like, I don't understand if all the for all was like, he specifically shouldn't have done it in that way and he should be punished in X, Y, and Z ways. Most of the comments I saw when I tried reading the surrounding drama was people like, hey, I run tournaments totally unrelated to this and you better not do it at my events. Like, <laughs> Why is this all about you, you daft cunt? And then two, the other set of people were the people who were sort of like, put the children, like actually Ned Flanders' fucking wife out, like the, whatever her name was. Like, but, but what if a kid sees this and then he goes to his local and does that? Like, right. So essentially in life, we're going to make everyone behave on what the basis for every like common denominator reaction would be. So basically now, logically, Rich, we better get all those fucking football celebrations under control because what if some little kid does it at school game? Like, I always hate that angle there because, like, spoiler, literally all you have to do, it's obvious. I mean, we'll even tie it to what you said about the insomnia one. Put it in the rules. Just put in one of the rules at the top of the page. At my event, we don't do, like, pop-offs or something like that. So uh, to me, it's a total storm in a teacup. Like, it didn't even look that bad. If he had endangered someone, I'd say, don't let him do it. The problem with this is, this is why I alluded at the beginning, I said I'm not for the fighting game. I've got a quick thing to say on that. So one... As far as I can tell, these pop-offs are one of the things they live for in the fighting yeah. game community. They want people to do crazy pop-offs and do shit where, you know, you take your shirt off or you high five everyone in the crowd. Or even, by the way, you go in the guy's face and you tell him, oh, fuck you up, bro, I'll come back and be like... So if you're going to do that, how can the line be, don't throw a chair on the floor? You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't feel... That feels like it's the same sort of vibe, you know? And then lastly, I'll just throw this out there. The thing I've always had the biggest problem ever in the fighting game community is, bro, not only is your fucking genre called fighting games, but you also all, because of the sort of culture of the people who play the game, flex this, like, street mentality and imply you'd beat people up. But then you're literally the one, like I just joked about, like the cartoon Ned Flanders' wife going, Oh, my God! Which is it, mate? Are you hood and hard, or are you a fucking bitch who's basically like the Sunday school teacher, like, that should be a band, it's outrageous. Like, that, those two can't fit together. Like, that cannot align. Like, if you're some hard man, some fucking road man, hey, hey man's good. Well, then why are you bored about him chucking a chair on the floor? It's not that big a deal, is it? And also, I'll just end on this note, right? One of the things I do appreciate about British sports culture is actually most of the culture in the games does have a lineal collection to what the game was at its beginning. So you probably know there's a famous saying about rugby, Rich, it's a banger if anyone's heard it, where they say football is a game, a gentleman's game played by thugs, but then rugby is a thugs game played by gentlemen. And the reason why that's true, if you don't know, is because in football, again, when theory, you're not supposed to foul people, people are the dirtiest cunts of all time, cheating all the time. In rugby, where you can actually just stamp someone's head if someone's not looking in the scrum, they tend not to do it. They actually do sort of play by like gentlemen's so here's the thing in British if this is like tennis yeah we have like a gentleman's culture of what the sport's supposed to be you're not supposed to be in the game and distribute you you're not supposed to wear flashy clothing you're supposed to sort of like it's it's kind of like an Anglo ethos right what does that got to do with beat em ups and fighting games like I say the, way, the weirdest thing about this whole topic I'll just end on that note is you've set a game up where it's all about personality and being wild and fucking up and you like the game you're tough and you got, but then you get mad over something quite minor because like I say I don't see this as like a, a good faith argument that you think if this guy does this then all of a sudden some 14 year old is going to go and actually wrap a chair around someone's head when he wins the game like are they really like is there really that direct connection between that I feel like there isn't and also I'll just say that's one thing in general I've never fucked with in fighting games is that they just I mean they not only literally refuse the term esports if you don't know except when the esports awards come around I notice but they also do that thing where they refuse to make a hard demarcation between pro and amateur in fact it's actually a selling point you probably know this Rich a selling point is that you can be some bozo dickhead and go to a local tournament and you actually might randomly get drawn to play like Hungry Box or like the best player left or something in the first round and that's actually part of the appeal as far as I can tell so I also hate that aspect because the obvious other way like I said to fix this is 
Nick is the only pros can do these pop-offs, you know what I mean? And only in this, like, only in big tournaments and only when they've got, like, a stage area. So then surely you get rid of the problem of some dickhead just going and doing it. So I, I, to me, I found this, like, a talk, like I say, it's a storm in a teacup. I don't know what the big deal is on this, but it seems fairly minor to me. Yeah, from watching the clip as well. It seemed like a cool clip too. It, it seemed like he was very passionate. Yeah, yeah, it does. Honestly, it does seem like a whole a whole lot of nothing, to be perfectly honest. Um, and I love it. You 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 mentioned the uh, the Deserto article. Uh, you can see the clip. <laughs> the quote the. The tournament organizers tweet it out themselves and someone quotes it saying, when you win or lose an event, please do not destroy property. You are either financially hurting an event. It's a chair, by the way. You are financially hurting the event or making it more difficult to secure deals in the future. When clips like this pop off, people think it's hype and try to imitate it at future events. Please don't. It's like, of all the just, like, short, like, is this like no one surely that person even writing that doesn't believe it surely no one believes that to be true you're financially hurting the event by picking up the chair and throwing it on the ground it's a chair and listen if you work for secret labs dx racer and hungry box pops off and has a big fucking moment picks up your chair throws it across the, oh, the opportunity is obvious isn't it yeah that. of course yeah. you would love that absolutely shit. you know if, if, if unless it breaks single- then it's a bit yeah, like, oh, a thousand pieces. Yeah, that that's fair. But then don't make a shitty product. But you, do, you know, like if if you are genuinely, <laughs> if you are, like, I just don't. It's just so, surely no one thinks like this. And to be honest, I think my main gripe with this is just like I. This is just the inset in a nutshell, which really pisses me off. Like there is no need to get upset about that. Like the specific incident. If you think he's picked up like the TV and fucking smashed it about and gone really ape shit, it's like, bro, that was a little much. This just isn't that. Like you're, this is a pearl clutching moment, and I just think it just reflects really poorly on, 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 on the fighting game community. It, it well, I don't think this is a universally accepted opinion, but do you know what I mean? Like it's just like, it, I, I don't even believe that the people writing these things actually believe it. I, I I cannot fathom what they do. I could be entirely wrong, but I just I just my brain won't accept that. Anyway, Rich, what are your thoughts on Hungry Box violently destroy? Well, it does. I don't even think the chair's broken. I mean, to, to me, the ultimate so. irony is people writing like the thing they clipped in the Deserto article is this clip's been shipped all over the fucking place as a result of like all these people crying about it. It was like high up on like live stream fails. The twit- the original Twitter videos got shit loads of views. Like talking about ah, doing this will lose money for a bitch. Like this is the best advertising they've probably had him for fucking ever. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? Um, yeah. A few like minor points I would make is one, that chair does like, they, they need to replace the chairs. Like, <laughs> from, from multiple angles like one it just doesn't look very comfortable Two, it kind of looks like one of those antiquey things that is like i don't know like almost made to snap i actually think it's kind of embarrassing that once he made the decision to pick it up and snap the chair but it'd be way more gangster if he had actually just split the thing in half so yeah it was a bit uh let's say very stereotypically gamer that he smashes the chair on the floor then picks it up again because it's not broken and goes to think about smashing it again and then regains his like inner nerd and puts it back down. I thought that was uh, quite sort of uh, picturesque. One piece of context, context, by the way, that makes this moment a little bit less epic. When I first saw this, I thought like, holy shit, this must be like the final. It's like lower bracket quarter final <laughs> or something. Or like lower bracket, like last 16 match. I was like, okay, maybe, yeah, maybe save that one for uh, the next round, buddy. That's a little bit... Ugh. I actually do think, and maybe this is where I differ from you guys a little bit, I actually do think it is a little bit weird how the tournament organizer posted it and framed it. I think even if you do that, I probably would have chucked in, like, not like a, exactly a party pooper caveat, but just like a, a small thing that implies that, like, I don't know, that, you know, uh, um like poor Mr. So even something cringe, like at the end, like poor Mr. Chair or something like this. Mm. Just something that implies that you don't yeah. re- want people to recreate this all the fucking time. Like it's fine in isolation or whatever. Like you're not going to lose your shit over it. And I think you would look like, yeah, some schoolmaster level of uh, party pooper if you did crap all over it. But 
yeah, I did think it was kind of weird. Like, what an amazing pop off! Wasn't that awesome? How he nearly broke our chair. Like, I don't know. I thought that was like just a little bit strange. But I think the ultimate irony of this whole thing, by the way, is that the fighting game community is like notorious for having like literal rapists and pedophiles and stuff like <laughs> just roaming yeah. through their game, and then making a fuss over someone picking up a fucking chair. Like that is just mental to me but also again like just classic deflection i don't mean deflection like the people who complain about it are rapists but it is kind of uh i am always suspicious of people who find time in their day to complain about the most asinine unimportant bullshit ever especially in the context of being part of a scene that is so notorious for having absolute freaks and criminals in it that are like around every corner and by the way this is one of those things where you only with fgc you only hear about the ones that get reported on or whatever like dodgy shit is happening at those events all the time and yet here we are talking about a fucking chair going through the air like my god like yeah nah it's it's absolutely fucking ridiculous but um i did find it funny because i read about it before i saw it and like thorin said i was kind of disappointed from multiple angles when i saw the video because i was like it's a fucking lower bracket quarterfinal match. He doesn't even break the fucking chair. And then I have to watch him like having this sort of cogs turning moment where he picks it up and thinks about throwing it again. Like, come on, guys, we're trying to get By more the way, people. To that's also e valid what you're saying, because obviously it's like the equivalent to the famous concept. That's like an unwritten rule of casting in esports, which is you're not supposed to say fuck. But if like G2 wins yeah, MSI, exactly. you're allowed to say fuck once just as emphasis. Yeah. So I agree with you. It would also have been such a different scenario if he just like won like a major or some massive. And this was like, you know, he'd been counted out that he won like the last game. And so I would agree that because in that scenario, you could also just go to one off in it. But I agree. The idea he did it on just like a normal match. She's like, what? That's yeah. a bit weird. I'll give you that. Yeah, that's fair. And I just, I something I find fantastic about all this, um, is the the, the quote tweet for, well, the the tweet, sorry, the tweet itself from the tournament organizers, the biggest Hbox pop off ever, for the most tense puff ditto ever. Man's playing ditto. He's literally his character is a Pokemon. It's Ditto, and you're and it's like oh, the the most tense fucking moment ever on Ditto. I just think surely there's something more like you would spin that a certain different way, or just not include the fact maybe he's playing Ditto. Just yeah, that is that's a weird statement. Yeah. You know as well the way that like people are getting mad at that part, like oh, the TOs using it as well. It's like bro, Rich will know what I'm talking about. I say this like. It's like that thing where the UFC had to pretend, like, now, now, Conor McGregor, the way you attacked Khabib in that bus. <laughs> Naughty. They used that clip yeah. in one million fucking promo. Because, by the way, it was straight fire. Like, obviously, it was money in the bank to show it. Like, they used that clip so many times, boys. Like, that's why if I am this TO in an, in an esports industry like esports, fucking barely anyone paying any money, you have to almost flex this. It's like, actually, well, the joke is this moment's already more famous than anything happened in the tournament. Like, mm. does anyone even know who won the tournament? You know what I mean? Like, not we him. all know about this moment. Yeah, no, true. No, I did see that was like the top comment on the thing was like Hbox like crashed out in spectacular fashion in like the very next round. And oh, yeah, all right, he, <laughs> he did fuck all okay. up. Okay, but yeah, brilliant, fantastic. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about today for our episode? Anything you want to touch on? Uh, I believe that's everything covered for now. Any other chair related? Uh, controversies i just or... like the way if you actually think about like the the episode in a holistic sense just mm. think about what i said at the beginning of the episode guys nobody has even a public opinion about should we even have events in countries mm. where they put you in prison for tweets <laughs> but in the same episode they're like what he did to that chair was unacceptable <laughs> like they, what a cloud ass industry we are i love it I love it. So and the cool. irony being the chair would have more rights. <laughs> it would. Yeah, some, exactly. Some people going over to the side. Yeah. Really, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and on that fantastic note, thank you, boys. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Thank you for watching at home. And we'll see you next time.